Somebody shout hallelujah. Children of God shout hallelujah. Just Amen. Before we take our seat, I want us to invite the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in our midst. One thing I've noticed is anywhere the Lord is sending us to go and preach this truth, the devil adhere to water down the word of God to make you not to believe. Some will hear, they will cry, but as soon as they go back, they will forget about it. It is not ordinary. It is the handwork of the devil. Because G Satan don't want you to know the truth. Hallelujah. Satan don't want you to know the truth. He want you to live in ignorance till you die. And when you die, you stand before God unprepared so. Oh, hear the warning. You will be crying, and I know. And then you will look at the wall. The Lord will show you vanity upon vanity. All is vanity. Some of you have come across this bank manager that died. It was a pitiful death. With all the billions and millions of everything he left behind. He went to watch a game. He died in the plane crash, unprepared soul. He went for holiday with his family. Him, the wife, and the son died. And he just opened a house, I think December of January, December, about one point something billion naira home that he was launching. Some of us, we can never be rich like him. But where he is today, you know me, I don't hide my faith. I don't hide things. He's not in heaven. It is not how you are spent for the Lord. It's how you, you live for the Lord. And what God is looking for is holiness. It's righteousness. It's not about, I have the money, I'm rich. It's not about name that takes to heaven. So you are very lucky to be poor. I'm happy to be poor and know the Lord. Than to be rich and very proud and pompous. So today, we are going to pray and take over principalities and powers here. Just three minutes. Hallelujah. We will sing this song to the Lord. Welcome the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in our midst. I want you to pay attention. We are not calling on the president of Nigeria that you will be talking is a man. We are calling on the great Jehovah that need your attention. He wants you to respect his presence. So when you are worshiping him, worship Jesus with all your heart and don't be distracted in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That's wonderful name. Jesus, that's wonderful name, is Jesus, that's wonderful name, Jesus, there is no your hands and raise up your hand. Jesus is Lord. Wave to him. Give him the glory. Amen. Oh, he has risen from the dead. He is Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, Father, we worship you, Lord. Jesus, every name must bow before you. We talk of Jesus Christ is alone. Thou art worthy. Take the glory 
take the worship, Father. Jesus. In Jesus. Mighty name we pray. Last prayer point before we go into the message. Say, all oh, demons living in me or guiding me. Sometimes you say, I hear voices telling me, don't believe. These are demons living in you. These are spirit living in you. I want to tell you sin you are committing there's a demon attached for that it's just like how we have different departments in the government head 
you have house of the senate you have minister of finance this they are government they are ministers that are in charge of this department hallelujah you have government of the state even Suleja. anything that is happening you have the government that will control every scene satan have demons that are in charge that's why some people say i want to stop lying i don't know there is demon that is holding you not to come out of lying there is demon that just imagine you are a liar you are a smoker how many demons you are carrying you are a fornicator you are a gossiper you are a witch you are a backbiter so you have more than that's why the that man that jesus came to say we are legion we are many everyone have his own parts to capture a soul i don't know this anger i don't know there's somebody which is called demon powers of darkness that say you you will not live lie he will be the one to manipulate you manipulating you because he knows that that line alone will never make you to enter heaven that's why we should take our christian life very serious you see your husband you cannot you are doing do all you have done all for him to love you he still have eyes be outside there are demons holding him which they call demon of adultery so today you are going to pray all demons living in me or guiding me to block me not to be perfect not to be holy by the power in the name of jesus i summons that demon and i come fire upon that demon get out of my life you spirit of anger you spirit of unbelief you spirit of holiness i say die in my life you demon responsible you rich responsible to hold me in smoking hold me in adultery hold me in fornication hold me in manipulation i say today all powers of manipulation all powers of sin break in my life spirit of holiness spirit of attachment spirit of do of joy him spirit of drunkenness spirit of love of money bow 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 spirit of homosexual spirit of lesbianism in your children i said today spirit of unbelief anger malice unforgiveness you demon responsible to hold me in this bondage i come against you today by the power in the name of jesus i break your grip over my body over my soul over my spirit every power controlling me out of the way of god receive fire receive fire receive fire holy ghost fire holy ghost fire holy ghost fire satanic hand pressing you in sin today i say fire upon those demonic hands only you will see only you will see i come out of sin today i break the power of sin today masturbation die in the name of jesus anger die in the name of jesus lie die in the name of jesus you powers of satan i break your yoke around me i destroy your power in my life i say come out by the authority in the name of jesus Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Ghost, we worship you. Father, we bless you. You are worthy to be praised. Thank you, Redeemer. Ancient of days, we bless you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Before we take our seats, we are going to bind, tie any witches and wizards in our midst. All principalities and powers in the flesh of man. We are going to say, Father, you say wherever two or three are gathered, you are in our midst. So no power or darkness should have authority here. We don't want principalities and power here. We want you to be here. So now we are going to command any dry eye witches and wizards that have come to manipulate, to hinder you, not to hear the word. Let them be arrested. Every assigned agent, every witch or wizard in this gathering now, all their works they have done ahead. Papa, I spoil it by the blood of Jesus. Every Signager, whosoever that is here, that is Queen of the Coast daughter, that is working for Satan, I arrest you now by the power in the name of Jesus. I destroy your power in your eyes, in your hand, any part of your body. I send fire in the name of Jesus. I subdue you under the feet of Jesus. I cover this place with the precious blood of Jesus. I say, angels 
house of God take over this heaven. I cover the entire place with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Anywhere they are manipulating us for, I release fire upon their cover, upon their powers. In the name of Jesus, I scatter. I blind your eyes. I confuse you. In the name of Jesus, I command Satan get out of this place by the authority. In the name of Jesus, I cover this place with the blood of Jesus. I cover every heart with the blood of Jesus. I hand over ourselves to the Most High God. Jesus, take over. This program is for you. Be honor, be honor. Jesus, we love you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Thank you, Lord, for your supremacy. Thank you for who you are. With you, all things are possible. Thank you for silencing the work of the devil. Thank you for taking charge over here. Lord, I give you an advance for those that will surrender to you today. Those you will convict them of their sin and make them to come out and accept you. I come against every pride. I come against every shame. I come against every unbelieving heart. I pray that Lord they will be touched. Their eyes will be open. You will remove the scale of sin from their eyes. Lord, you will do wonders here. They will go home as a new person. Lord, your blessing shall come down. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Speak to me now. Take over the stage and let your name be glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Put your hands together for Jesus as you take your seat. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Happy to be in Suleja. A powerful place. Amen. My name is Mrs. Linda Porika, a.k.a. Sister Linda. I like that name. Hallelujah. Amen. I love that name so much because that is the name fake pastors hate. They hate Sister Linda so well. That is the name that sinners, when they see me, they twist their face because they will say she has come again. I'm happy to carry that name in Jesus' name. Today, my topic here, I'm going to share a revelation with you. That is my encounter 2010. But I'm going to rebrand it the name Holiness, the only way to heaven. The topic for my revelation today is Holiness, the holy way to heaven, or the only way to see God. Hallelujah. The Bible lets us know that without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Without holiness, when you read through the Bible, there is no side the Bible says, without prayer, you can't see the Lord. Without riches, without this, without prosperity, he made it clear and said, without holiness. That's to tell you that there's something so important about holiness that every human being in this world must have and must acquire to live a holy life. Hallelujah. Some will say, what is holiness? For me, I, I told it today, to be holy means to be separated from the world of sin, darkness, and the evil by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. When you are saying, I am holy, you need to separate yourself from sin because the God that called you is holy. Why they call God holy? Because there is no sin found in him. There is nothing called sin. Darkness is not in God. That's why even the devil knows it's a holy God. Hallelujah. Every human being knows that God is holy. He carried that title. And he's still holding that title. And up to now, no power can contend with him to say, God, you have error in you. So we that are children of God, he said we should be holy for our heavenly father is holy. Because for you to be a child of God, for you to carry his name on you, you must show the identification of Jesus in you, which is holiness. So if you are a Christian, and you say you are a Christian, and you say you are a child of God, but you are not holy, in your life, in your dressing, in your deeds, in your action, I want to tell you that you are not a holy child of God. You can be a Christian. You can be called a Christian. But what takes to heaven is holy life. Hallelujah. See what Jesus said to, to Saul. When, he ha when Paul, Saul had an encounter with Jesus, the main thing Jesus said, your, your calling is for this. Acts chapter 26. To tell you that all what God wants from you and you, the main thing, it is not by coming to church, dancing, this, that these are all rejoicing before the Lord. Yes, it's good. Giving tithe and offering, yes, it's good. This, we are appreciating God for saving us. That is why we come, we give tithe, we give offering, we build a house of God for, Lord, for the Lord, we encourage one another. We are just showing appreciation to be saved. 
Hallelujah. But those things will not take you to heaven. There is difference between anointing and holiness. Hallelujah. You have anointing to preach, to deliver people. You have anointing to go and build. Some people, they have grace to build. Some can go to a village, a remote village. Give that person one, two months. You will see crowd of people. Some have anointing to win souls. Some have anointing to see vision, revelation. Some have anointing to preach. Any ad, even to Muslim, they will give their life to Christ. But that will not take that person to heaven. What will take you to heaven is your holy living. When you enter heaven through holiness, when you are inside heaven, then God will reward you for the evangelizing life. God will reward you for your prayer warrior life. God will reward you for your suffering, the persecution you went through. God will reward you for the obedient to his word. God will reward you for supporting his kingdom work. God will reward you for all the labor you labor in his house. That is why we need to work for the Lord. For reward. But to enter heaven is holiness. Is holiness. But today, the churches have turned it upside down. They will tell you, you, don't, you are not coming to church. You are not paying tithe and offering. You are not doing this. I want to see which heaven you will go. That's why many people believe that they thought that Jesus is like an abalist. That go and give God money. He will bless you. God, God will be happy with you. What God wants from you, my sister, my brother, is holy living. You come to the Lord, you don't even have money, but you just serve him in holiness and in righteousness, in pure heart. Jesus will be happy because you are saying that I am a true child of God. You are representing him well. But you come and give millions to the church. You come and be funny yourself and say we are the one that build this church. But lying, fornication, adultery, anger, malice, witchcraft is in you. I want to tell you, you are only doing that for your pastor and for yourself, but heaven is not for you. Heaven is not for you. Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26, verse 17 to 18. All of us know the story. I don't need to go all the way. When God visited Saul, that he became Apostle Paul. This was the journey. He was going to persecute the Christian. He was so zealous for, 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 uh, for the, I would say, the Hebrews law, the Moses law, that believed that those that are serving St. Jesus, is Lord, they want to come and spoil the, the, the Moses law. That the, they, they see them as if this is a strange spirit. Like how many people are seeing her remote today in the world, I like, say, we have strange spirit. Our doctrine is strange. Hallelujah. So, on his way going, the Lord visited him. The Lord appeared to him. And that is what today I'm going to tell you. How the Lord appeared to me and what the Lord Jesus had to tell mankind. See what the Lord Jesus said. In Acts chapter 26, verse 17 to 18. It said, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles. Unto whom now I send thee. The main thing of every human being. Your calling, your purpose for this staying on this earth. You want to serve God, want to go to heaven. This is verse 18. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. From sin to righteousness. Darkness means evil, wickedness, sinful life, evil. This is how the world is living. Jesus said to Saul, I am sending you now to the Gentiles. That are serving me, they think they are serving me, but they are serving me in evil. They are serving me. So some people will come to church. After church, they go to abalis. Some will even rub the, the medicine of the abalis to come to church. Some will put something in their mouth for love, for protection, tie something on their waist. They are still coming to church. God said they are serving me in darkness. They don't know who is me. You people don't know this God. That's why you think God is not able to help you. In your sickness, you say, I have tried all, I have prayed, go to church. Let me go to a place. And you begin to kill, blood, uh, kill sheep, drink the blood, bait you in the river. They are just dedicating you to Satan. Satan will truly heal you because God gives him small power. But he will take something from you, your soul. Satan will never give you free gift. But Jesus is the only God that will give you free gift. And then tomorrow you don't want to serve him, he still sits as God. But he will not come and kill you. I, I, I give you salvation. Now you have backslide. I will kill you. No. But Satan, ask witches, they will tell you. That's why many of them are afraid to confess. Because Satan says, if you open mouth and say, you don't want to be with me, I will kill you. But Christians, they can come to church today, they backslide, they come back, God accepted, they go. But don't play with that. Because there will be a time you will jump God. Hallelujah. 
and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness. You have been serving God all these years. They are sin upon you. God has not forgiven you yet. You have been deceived by your zeal. How can I go to hell? When the Lord sent me to some bishop, they told me that this small girl, I don't know anything. How can you come and tell me that God says he's angry with me that if I die, I will not go to heaven? Do you know how many churches I've built for the Lord? Do you know how many people have no God through me? You can see pride. Is that what God is looking for? Bishop, God say you are lying now. Bishop, God say you are not in the right way. Bishop, God say you are not holy. You preach righteousness on the pulpit. You are not living it. You should be doer of the word, but you are not doing it. You only command people, do like they do like they. But you the bishop, you the overseer, you the pastor, you are not doing it. But they say, no. See how many crowd are coming to me. How many people are saying, Papa, when you pray for me, I'm here. How will I go to her? But they forget that Jesus said, that day I will say them be depart from me, you walk out of iniquity. And many of them will say, Lord, Lord, but we cast demon in your name. And God will say, Yes, you walk out of iniquity. That was only what you people think. Your pastors have been deceiving you. Oh, mama, God is with you. You have given us one million. God says I should tell you he's happy with you. God is pleased with you. And you know how you are getting the money. Duping people, lying to people, putting price on your business, duping people. People are crying. You are suffering people. All to go and carry pride. You are a, you are a politician. You know how you are eating government money, stealing from the poor, coming to give church. And your pastor said, God is happy with you. That's why we don't fear God. We thought that God is like man that compromised. Is these pastors that have deceived us? Many pastors have made people to see that God too is looking for money like them. That's why many people will tell you that when I, 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 I'm just looking for money, I want money. We are talking to youth. Many youth will tell you that by the time I'm rich, you will see pastors will be the one blessed, praying for. In fact, they will be fasting for me. The most important thing, let me have money. Mommy, if I have money, huh, I will go to that heaven because I will appoint how many pastors will be praying for me. That is how the mentality of people are today. They thought that when you have money, then because pastors will be praying for you, you will go to heaven. Nobody is bigger than God. And God said, I am not a respecter of any man. Be your pastor, your bishop. Be your overseer. Be your president. Be your governor. Be the richest woman in the whole world that when you speak, people, call, people will bow. Jesus said, I am not a respecter of any man. He not say so many. He said, all men. I am not a respecter of you. So if you die as a president, you commit sin and say, go to hell. I don't have anything to fear you. It's we that will fear. Hey, the president, how can you talk to the president? How can you talk to your overseer like this? Overseer that is doing bad. Woman leader that is doing evil. You cannot stand up and say, mad, this thing you are doing. Hey, stop. Hey, they will discipline you. Hey, God is not a respecter of any man. If you die in your sin, you will say, God, but I built a house for you. Your bishop, your, pap your preacher was telling me you're happy with me. God said, me, happy with you. Go to hell. Then you will know who I am. I'm a holy God. He said, of sin, receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them, which are sanctified by faith that is in me. You can see the main thing of soul calling is to turn people from darkness to light. You, your calling for God to give you salvation for you to be a Christian, for, you, for your eyes to be open to know that, oh, Jesus is Lord. That knowledge that was given to you. I want to tell you the purpose for God to give you that knowledge to know who he is. It's for you to come out from sin. That is your calling. I am called as a Christian. I'm a worker in the church. That calling as a Christian. That, that light that, was, that shined upon you, that make you to know that Jesus is Lord. It is not for you to come and say, ah, I was, I was a sinner. God, you do this for me. In fact, some people will come and be testifying, but they are still sinner. I want to tell you, you are wasting the salvation of the Lord upon your life. Hallelujah. Holiness. Holiness is obedience to the word of God. Holiness is obedient to the word of God. Taking God and his word above all else. That is holiness. When you say, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. You don't need to turn left, right. I have decided to follow Jesus. I am a holy child of God now. All things have passed away. Behold, I have now become new. 
if you say you have decided to follow Jesus, why is lying still in your mouth? Why is fornication still found in you? Why are you still masturbating? Why are you still flying in the night? Why are you still having unforgiveness to that your brother, to your sister, to your mother, to your, your husband? Why are you still insultive? Why do you have bad words in your mouth? Why do you still speak carelessly? Don't you know the Bible says we pay for every careless word in our mouth? You did not verify a matter. Somebody just comes to you and says, that sister, this is a... You or join somebody to criticize somebody which you do not have the fact why are you risking your life by speaking carelessly against children of God against your brother, against your neighbor you will just be talking, thing that you don't have fact you just say this is how they live their life as you see this, you see how it is careless word you say you are a child of God you say you are a child of God but you go to the village, you know you still visit that abalis. You still need charm to renew, to charm your husband, or to, to, to bait yourself. Some of you are looking for all these things to bait your daughter so that you have a big man, a rich man. And But you say you're a Christian. You're a deacon, you're a deaconess in the church. You're elders in the church. But you join people to, to, to bring somebody down in the offices. As our mommy Okoji was saying, some of the people that are doing that to them, that how can we carry this, how can we give this one uh, all it, or carry her to abroad? If you ask them now, they are leaders in the church. But they are oppressing another Christian because that other Christian is born again. They, their own Christian is worldly. But they will tell you that Jesus is my Lord. Those wicked orgas in the church, they are Christians. They will preach tell you I love Jesus with all my heart but they are the one oppressing other Christians because they say we want to stand for our faith some of our children that don't want to wear trousers in NYSC when they go they will tell you that there are some deeper life, there are some redeemed workers that are in the church say see look at you, we too we are Christian we all pass through this, we wear trousers nothing is wrong, go and put on trousers when Jesus is saying it's an abomination for women to wear trousers but they are the same Christian that are telling our children, go away, man in contention against God. It's you that are fighting God, not Satan. It's you. God said it in his word. You have the audacity because you are a madam in the church. And say, or in the office, say, go and wear trousers. This is my office. You are not afraid of the almighty God that made you say, I don't want trousers. You are challenging God in authority. That's why God said, I will destroy this world so painfully like I've never destroyed other generations. Because this generation, we are very wicked. We are not afraid of anybody. Even God's man is challenging God. Hey, sir, it's God that says to we ask, I don't want to. Who, who, then let God go and give you work from this office. This is my office. Sometimes when some of these children come and be crying, I'm not crying for them. I'm crying for that person that open mouth and be talking to God like that. That God will do like this. Your life will take him from you. You will die. And not come back. Another person will take your position in the, in the office. Fear God. That is holiness. Fear God. That is holiness. We are talking about determination in this, in this program. One thing you should know. That to serve God. To make heaven. You must be determined. To wear any kind of design the Lord made for you. In Christianity, Jesus is the tailor. Jesus is the tailor. He is the owner of the party that we are preparing to go to in heaven. He is the one who will tell you how you will enter. Some of you, the day you give your life to Jesus, suffering has started. But that is how he designed your cloth. You call your cloth suffering gown. Till you enter heaven, you will suffer in this world till you enter. Some of you, long suffering or short suffering, and then at the end, you will glorify and then enter heaven. So Jesus is our tailor. So when somebody will say, since I give my life to Jesus, I join holiness, suffering upon suffering. Other people are testifying, me, I don't know why my life, you backslide and go again, you don't even know. God is not a one-way God. Hallelujah. Don't say, and Jesus is like this in different way but it's still God maybe me my own design as I'm suffering it now Jesus said you will suffer much things for me 
But some of you will come and give your life today, today. And Jesus will give you easy way to help. You will live your life. Open doors will come for you. Say, oh, I was wasting my life in sin. Now see, since the day I accept Jesus, I live a holy life. I trip off from all my evil. I confess all my sin. See the way I'm having peace. But others will not say like that. Some will say that since the day I become holy, persecution never ended in them in our life. But all what I want to tell you, we are still going to heaven. Just that we have different calling and different design. This is what Jesus wants you to know. Don't envy your brother when he's saying, hey, God is blessing me. And you'll be sitting there and say, why may God not bless me? I want the one in holiness. Jesus said, I should tell you, a different way. He will pass you to go to heaven. Some will go straight. Some will go the other way. Hallelujah. But all what you want you to know, holiness is the key. You just be holy and righteous. Anyhow Jesus pass you, Anyhow, the persecution arises against you. Just be holy and righteous. Take a look at the disciples. They have different way they died. The different way they persecuted them. But all of them are in heaven today. Peter was, was turned upside down. Paul was beheaded. These are different ways God designed how they will suffer for him. So you and I, we are not exempted. We are still children of God. And we are following the same Jesus that, our, uh, that the disciples follow. So all of us, we have our own different persecution and trials. But one thing we know is that we will get to heaven. If you reach there before me, you use this door, use this door. All of us are coming to where? This hall. So don't give up when somebody is testifying. Don't say me. My own is like this. Mommy Okoji was saying it. All God wants you to know is that holiness is the way of life. Hallelujah. Today, I want to tell you, without holiness, you are doomed. Many of you, you hate holiness. You hate holiness dressing. Some people will say, if this is the only way that will take me to heaven, I will not go. How can I dress like this? Hey, my face without makeup. Hey, how can I do without eh, toning my skin? How can I do without makeup? How can I do without it? In fact, do you mean I have to confess all my sin? In fact, do you mean I have to go and restitute all the sin, evil thing I've, I've done? All the money I stole from government, I should go and confess it. Hey, my sister, I don't believe. In fact, they will run to one fake pastor, one church, where the pastor too is looking for salvation, but he's not aware. Who say, who say like that? I'm telling you, there's nothing in the Bible like that. Just say, God have mercy, has forgiven you, forgiving you. Go ahead with your life. Just come and pay tithe and offering. And you will not say, hey, hey, hey. these holiness people, they told me that to go and confess all the things I stole from the office. Can you imagine? Is it no problem they want to? Is that how God works? God look at the heart. Is the heart. Don't mind these holiness people. I should put a year before God will say I'm holy. I want to tell you, me that I'm talking to you, these are some of my words I was saying to my younger sister. Hallelujah. If you hate holy life, I want to tell you, you are doomed. If you hate holiness, some people are angry. When they see holiness person coming with flyer, as they zoom you up and down, they say, sorry, 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 I'm not interested. I'm not interested. We came across a sister, one lady in shop right. My driver was giving her a CD. As soon as she noticed that the CD is me and he looked at me, he said, I'm not going to your church. We said, no, just say, no, 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 I don't want to, def- I don't want to bother myself. Sister, this is just the word of God. Just take it. The lady said, lie, lie, he will not take it. Why? I told the driver. If I was not here, she would have taken it. But because she has seen the product of that CD, look at me. I know we are here. Time I had with big gun. She would not, they want me to be dressed like this. Satan has given her the signal already. That's why she said, no. I will not take it. You hear what our sister was saying here? She said they have been passing, talking to her, but she was looking at her. Mm-hmm, like that. If you are here, you hate holiness. You hate the dressing of holiness. You hate holiness living. I want to tell you, live all your life on earth. You are doomed. You are sorrowful. You fat. You, you are sorry don't have any. Sometimes when I see people that think they are rich, they speak grammar, they do their hair like this, what we are traveling, I look at them, I see their rottenness. I say, look at these people, they are maggots already. They are doomed. I pity human beings that don't know the truth. 
If you reject holiness, you reject the word that we are telling you here, and go back and say, I regretted going to that program. That we are just condemning, telling, if you reject this truth, a day will come. A day will come. A day will come. And that day is very soon. As you see the way the world is going, I told somebody, I say, people to stop blaming Timibu, President Timibu, is not the cause of the suffering. America is crying too. Europe is crying. I'm just coming from my country. It's worse there. I say, ah, Una too. Timibu is not here. But we are all crying from the same thing. It's because it is the end time. When you read the Bible, the Lord told, tell us suffering upon suffering. We are going to be passing through different stages of suffering till the Lord come. And this suffering is going to be increased. That God said, if I did not shorten my coming, the very elect will be turned away. Because some people say, I can't do this holiness. I have to steal to buy rice. God, you have to show me mercy. I have to compromise. I'm a widow. And this man, landlord. He's telling me to sleep with him. God, I don't have money. The church cannot help me. I need to. I need, and the landlord too. be say, leave my house. Leave my house. And then people that are selling food are increasing. School fees is increasing. Everything is increasing. It will reach a point. Some people that say Jesus is Lord, they will begin to go to Satan. They will go to Abalis. Go to Juju. In fact, some will begin to do ritualists. In Nigeria, we are seeing it now majority of these people that are doing kidnapping, you check them, Christians are inside, those that are doing uh, ritual money, see these big boys in the, in the Facebook, most of them are Christian, they go to church. Majority of them will, will follow them up, they are Catholics, they go and spray money, they church. see the pastor will be dancing, will be dancing with blood money. Suffering. But you that are a child of God, children of God, that we know the Bible, we are reading it, we are trying. When we see this, it makes us to be so solemn more prayerful, more deeper in holiness because we are seeing that the sun train, the cloud has started to be opening a little. That very soon the trumpet will sound. So this that you are here is Timibu. Remove Timibu and bring another person. You don't know that it is not there. It's God that owns the world. Ebola came. Hey, hey, hey. Bang. It disappeared. Corona came. God told us that nobody and kill my, 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 my affliction. God told us, is it not so? He said, it's only me. And the only thing that will wipe away this is repentance. When my people come to me and repent, as I brought it, this is how I will take it away. He said to us that Corona will disappear. We will not be here Corona again. But there will be no cure for it. And it end up like this. They will talk, okay, put no smiles, social distance, but the disease has minimized. In fact, some people don't even bother about corona again. But watch out, another one will come. Because there are stages of suffering, God say. You don't read the Bible, you don't bother, that's why you don't know. When something happens, you just cry, hey, this country, hey, this government. But when you read the Bible, when you see things unfolding in your eyes, you will know that truly. God say, earthquake upon earthquake. Wars, nation to nation. What is happening in Israel here? Some of you don't follow news. What is happening with ECOWAS? What is happening in other countries, Ukraine and uh, uh, or Russia? What is happening? What is happening? Killing every day. You are sleeping. Some people don't sleep. In my small country there, Sierra, what is happening there? Fight. Bloodshed. I told them that it's only Bible say I will not forsake the righteous. When you are righteous, even if they are shooting, God we are covered under your canopy. The bullets will pass. But sinners, you are like a prey. You are in the mouth like chicken in the hand of Satan. That's why today run to Jesus. He's only the Savior. Most of our brethren that are here that are truly born again, ask them. They are crying suffering, but they don't know suffering. Isn't it so? Every day they eat. We are not eating and say we eat turkey every day, but we eat food a day. Why some people cannot eat? Because we are children of God. God makes sure that we eat that toast, sweet one. God will give it to us. Rice, jollof rice. Because we serve a living God and because we are obedient children of God. He said, I will not forsake the righteous. He did not say, I will not forsake the Christian. The righteous. You that are righteous, don't be bothered. 
God is for you. Hallelujah. So if you hate holiness doctrine, dressing, the lifestyle, the practice of it, I'm telling you again, you are doomed. If you hate holiness, if you don't, be, you don't give your life to Jesus and live a holy life, if you don't pray to be holy, if you don't continue in holy living, if you backslide and drop the holy doctrine, I want to tell you, that cry, you will cry. When the saints have gone, cry it now when the saints are still around. That cry, you will cry, sinners. When the saints have gone, cry it now when the saints are still around. Because after rapture, there will be no more mercy. This is the time for you to ask for God mercy when the saints are still around. That cry, that shame that you say, if I pull your ring, I'll be ashamed. Be ashamed now. I am pleading with you. You that believe that without hearing, I'm not beautiful. Without makeup, I'm not beautiful. Without wearing trousers, they will not know that I'm having a good shape. Without showing my breasts, I will not have a husband to marry. Without perfuming myself, I will be smelly. If you don't stop those things and come to holiness, you that believe that I must show them, maybe they don't think say, because I'm holy, and your mouth is sharp, you know how to insult, you know how to display anger. If you don't stop those things, cry now. Cry now. Hallelujah. You have to be holy in all manner of conversation. That's what the Bible tells us. You have to be holy. You have to be holy. Please, let us be holy. Please, I am welcoming you to holiness life today. I am going to share a few, just, just maybe 30 minutes of my testimony. Why I am telling you this, without holiness, you will not enter heaven. It happens to me. It happens to me. Hallelujah. Let's turn to Second Peter. It happens to me. If you don't want holiness in your life, if you reject holy living, I'm pitying you. Because it's going to be hard for you. Second Peter chapter 2. From verse 1 to 9. But there were false prophets. Also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you. Who privily shall bring in damnable heresies. Even denying the Lord that bought them. And bring upon themselves swift destruction. Before there were false prophets. And even now, there are false teachers that will bring different doctrines that will tell you that nobody can be holy. My former pastor was telling me like that. When I asked him, my sister is going to a church that said we should be holy, we should live a holy life. He, oh, what, what did I need to do? He told me that my daughter, nobody can be holy. What takes to heaven is the heart. Plainly. It's by grace we go to heaven. Don't listen to those ones. They will go and give themselves Lord. They cannot do those ones. They say they, you can stop lying. Who can stop lying? Just go and ask God for mercy. But it is a daily business. Anger must be there. It's pastor that is telling me like this. He said it is grace that takes us to heaven. It is not all this holy life, not this works. And they carry a powerful big bottle anoint you all and pour on my head. And told me that I should tell my sister never to preach that, that doctrine. That they are still in the law. We are not in the law. Jesus has paid our price. We are now free. It's by grace we go to heaven. That's why I'm telling you. Be coming to church always. Pay your tithe. Do activities in the church. This is the thing that makes God to be happy for you. When you die, the heaven will be open for you. The gate of heaven. You hear the doctrine? So that's why I was going to church. That's why we take money from boyfriend. Go and pay tithe and offering. That's why I'll be singing a church, dressing anyhow, because I believe that that are the things I need to do to go to heaven. So these are the... And many shall follow their permissious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Many, the Bible says many are called, few are choosing. You are lucky to hear this word today. When Jesus comes, how many millions of, or thousands of souls 
of people in Suleja, you will be surprised that maybe, maybe they will not even up to 100 that will rapture. Or up to 300 or 400. In the whole world. God said, I will destroy a whole nation that forget. All the nations that forget God, I will destroy them. In the whole world, that time, it was only six people in the days of Noah. A whole world. How many millions of people in the generation? Not a nation of Noah. Not that to say, okay, Noah was in Nigeria. It's only Nigeria. God said the whole world. Just imagine that the whole world be destroyed. And only six people make heaven. Six people escape. Eight people, sorry. Eight people escape. Hallelujah. Only eight people. After millions of souls in the world. The whole world, not one nation. When I read that passage, I say, this God. Then what we make God to make our own world different? If anybody sin against God, the whole America, the whole Europe, the whole Africa, if we decide not to follow the way of God, God will cast all of us to hell and he still sits in, in heaven and say, I am God. And when you are in hell, you will still recognize him as God. He don't change. So he's only pitying you. If you go to hell, he pain him, but he will, not, he, will not, he, will not, he will not die because of you. It's only you that will suffer it. And you will still recognize him in heaven, in hell, that he is God. And true con covetousness shall they, they with filmed words, make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnations lumbereth not. For if God spared not the angel that sin, but cast them down to hell, and deliver them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. Are you hearing I want you to fear this God. Angels that were serving God. Angels that were running mission for him. When they commit sin, when they committed that sin of disobedience, following Lucifer, God say, for if God spear not the angels, you, what have you done for God? Can you compare your service with angels? You don't have food today, you begin to complain. You have not even done evangelism for God. You have started complaining. Angels are running errands up and down, up and down, up and down. Can you compare your movement up and down for Jesus? But if God cannot spare those ones because they commit sin, is it you that you have not done nothing for the Lord? You start, you sit on murmuring for morning to night. You murmur against the church, murmur against God, murmur against your faith, murmur, murmur, murmur. Is it you that will commit sin and die and go to heaven? No, my dear. And spare not the whole world, but save Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the wall of the ungodly. Do you see? If God did not spare the little children, their mother, the old men, that would, did not serve him in the days of Noah. You see, what we are telling you, bring your children to God. These are little children. These are little children. When God, ready, when God is ready to strike, Little children, not little children, we clear. Hallelujah. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. This is an example God said so we should live, we should learn from. For you that want to live ungodly life, you that want to serve God the way you want, that is how I was doing. The way I want to serve God, that is how I believe God loved me so much, he will follow my own way. I want to serve God, but God should allow me to go to a nightclub. I want to serve God, but God should allow me I should be smoking. I want to serve God, God should allow me I should have a boyfriend. I want to serve God, God should allow me I should be dressing the way I want, naked dresses, seductive dresses. I want to serve God, God should allow me I will tattoo my body. I want to serve God, God should allow me to design my hair the way I want it. I want to serve God, but God should allow me to be putting here on my body. That was how I was living my Christian life. And that is how many of you are living your Christian life. I want to serve God, I should choose the kind of husband I want. God should not tell me this is the one. That is how many Christians are serving God today. If you tell them, God say, don't do this. They'll tell you, say, no. God, don't look at that one. It's the heart. It is a lie. They want to serve God the way they like. Not that they, are, not that they know God. Not that God is telling them. They just want to serve God the way that's sweeting them. 
They should go to nightclub. They should go to worldly party. They should drink alcohol. They should change men like that, change women like rapper. They should be doing all the kind of things they like. And still, God should say, come to heaven. I'm telling you, you are doomed. You are doomed. Verse 7. And deliver just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, in, sin, in seeing and hearing, vex his righteous soul for day to day with their unlawful deeds. God only saved Lot and, and his two children. God, Lot was angry in the city of Sodom, vexed with their ungodly lifestyle. God looked down and said, only in this place is Lot and his family. Not knowing that the wife too was not serious. The wife too was loving the worldliness, but Lot did not know. God say, the angel of God, this will not be I have a dream. Angel appear and say, run to the mountain. God say, you people should not look back. This is how some of you are doing. God is taking people to heaven and hell. Things that you have not been doing. God is even giving you dream that your reign will take you to hell. That trust us will take you to hell. That dwelling will take you to hell. Remove it, remove it, remove it. You are laughing. If I it has turned music to you, remove it, you will be shaking your head. As Lord wife turned sword, this is how you will turn like animal bonds in hell. Jesus, I should tell you, you think you are hiding. He said, I should tell you, where your hiding heart stopped, that is where his own starts. When you will be crying here, God show me mercy. God, I will not do it again. He will not be looking at you, say. This we just start. It's one minute. You will be there ten years, forty years, fifty years. God said today is one day for you. Keep crying more. When I was talking to you for ten years, I was talking to you for twenty years. You had in your heart. You say you did not believe because you love Yari more than me. You love unrighteous. You love smoking, drinking. You love being a second wife. You love sin, sin, anything sin. You love flesh. You love boyfriend more than me. I say separate with that man. You say, eh, we have, we have given birth. And eh, what will I do? You are arguing me. You are arguing with me. That is how Christians are today. Tell them now. They will tell you that I, 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 I can hear God for myself. God, let God convict me, not you. But the Bible says what I say to one, I say to all. You that you are still waiting for God to come and convict you. As if God is your man. God is your rank. When your organ in the office here, everybody Monday when they are coming, the secretary pass message. Do you have to say, let Oga call me and tell me I must do like this before I do? When the secretary or even the common gate man say, Madam, Oga said tomorrow you should not come here. So 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 you say, Okay, okay, okay. Why is it God sending us to you? Say until God convict me. Wait for God conviction in hellfire. The Lord knows how to deliver the, the godly out of temptation. And to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. God is keeping you. God is keeping some of these fake pastors. Maybe they will change. But if they do not change, he's, keeping, he's waiting for them on the day of judgment to punish them. But shiftly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Okay, that's just up at verse 9. Hallelujah. That is one to nine. You can see, if God did not pardon Sodom and Gomorrah, if God did not save other people, in the day of Noah, everybody died and they hell. If God did not spare, when Korah, Nathan, and Abaniah caused the people to sin against God, when, Jesus, when God was moving our fathers, forefathers from the, from, from the land of Egypt, the ground opened and how many thousands of people, the Bible record, they swallowed themselves. They enter hell. Is it you that you are hearing that fornication is a sin, masturbation is a sin, lying is a sin, anger is a sin, witchcraft is a sin, you still had in your heart. Unforgiveness is a sin. Smoking, selling alcohol is a sin. That is your business. Attachment Naked dresses, seductive dressing. You see some people, they are married. Their breast is still out. I don't even know what they are still leaving their breast for. If they want to be married again to another man. They are still dressing that way. For what? 
This is the damnation. I read John chapter 6, verse 24, then I start my message just fast. We're not, we are not going to dip. If you want the full message, you can get it from Suleja chapter, yeah? Ask for it. Or you can get it on the YouTube types. Sister Lena or Pastor Porika, you will see my message there. Sister Lena Porika, testimony of heaven and hell is there. John chapter 6, from verse 24 to 27. Amen. John 6. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciple, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum, seeking for Jesus. And when they have found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, which comest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I said unto you, Ye seek me not, because ye saw the miracles. Ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves, and were filled. I will stop there. I will go to verse 17 later. My testimony. Those days, I labor for the meat that perished. I follow Jesus for his miracle. Why I'm telling you now is now my eyes have clear. We go to church for who Jesus is. Hey, Jesus can do miracle. Hi, hey, you are having this problem. Go to church. Ah, there is one powerful man of God. If you lay hand on you, your problem has finished. That was what was carrying us to, for the meat, the, 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 the blessing that we are having from God, the food, the prosperity. That is what some of you are going to church for. Verse 27. Jesus said to them now, Labor not for the meat which perishes. But for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him as God the Father sealed. I was going to church for the meat that perished, for prosperity, for fame, for favor, for blessing, to be rich, for God to give me power in the sense, oh, anywhere I go, favor should follow me. For God to give me money. That was the main thing that was carrying me to, he, to, 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 to church. And that is the main thing. Many people are killing themselves in the church. Fasting one month, three months. You ask, what are you fasting for? I want God to make my daughter to marry this year. That is the only thing you fast for one month. Why are you fasting? I want God to, to, to make me and my husband to, to have connection. I want God to open favor for me. I want God to take me to America. I want God to turn my story around. Sister, it is hard for you to hear somebody is fasting, following Jesus up and down. You say, I want to be sanctified. I want to be holy. I want God to make me holy. It is hard. Go to churches today. I can bet you. You can go to 99 churches. Testimony time. You will never hear them saying, I was a sinner before. I used to lie. I used to fornicate before. Eh, but now, I am not a child of God. No. You will just hear, I want to thank God. In accident, my enemy wants to kill himself, not me. And God will give me victory. In fact, as I'm talking to you, my fiancé in America bought, just bought me a new brand car. Hey, people will be shouting. And the pastor say, receive your own. This is your year. January to December. And the main thing that people should go before God for, God make me holy. God make me righteous. Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his holiness. All other things, miracle, children, blessing, marriage, shall be added unto you. The main thing you should come to God first is holiness. Is seeking God. What will make God happy? God wants me to live a holy life. This is what you should be praying for. God, make me to be an obedient child of God. Make me hate sin. Make me to live right. What do you want me to do? When you are pleasing God, you will not begin to do miracles. You will sit down like this. You hear what Mommy Okoji say. Papa was praying and then all of a sudden food came. Is he the one that went to a neighbor and was saying, God said, I should bless the man of God? No. He was praying, doing the will of God because God said prayer is the key. He used the key to open the door of that woman had to bring food for him. But you, you were busy bribing. You were busy sleeping with men. You were busy doing corrupt full act. 
and you will go to church. Some people are busy killing and dying and say we are fighting witchcraft. I want to tell you, I was following the meat that perished. Dressing was, was, was part of my, my life. I love makeup. I love fashion. I love worldliness. In fact, worldliness was so deep in me. When I mean worldliness, I should be enjoying any time. Dancing, drinking, boyfriend, laughing. Oh, today we are in the beach with my girls. Next tomorrow, we are there dressing seductively. That, in fact, when I'm walking, people are looking at me. That is a pride to me. So people say, ah, God give you fine breasts, oh my dear. Hey, your leg is fresh, oh. That is my, that is my praise. That is my joy. Coming to church. Purposely wear tight trousers. And the pastor in the church, he will say, God has blessed us. Our daughters are very attractive and powerful. These are the churches we go to. I'm telling you. When I put my tattoo on my body, I was carrying six earrings on my ears. One day, my pastor woke up to me and said, Ha! Ah, I like this, your tattoo. And then my, for my pastor wife, most of the time he will ask me, where do you do your hair? How do you fix your eyelash? Which cream are you using? Well, you know, all those kind of things. Falseness. It was going to the point that it's like I will have weak glue because of the glue, changing nails. I was not proud of my natural looks. If I remove my weavon or expression, I plan to I braid my hair with attachment. As soon as they are losing it, I will tie my hair. That is the time you know that I can tie head. I will tie the hair or I palm the hair. I must go to Selo. That's why I have weavon cap. I will just be putting it on. I was not proud of my natural looks. Today people are saying, Mommy, you have fine nails. Those days I see these nails like it's not good. I condemn. I say, why God make this my finger? This one is bent. If I have money, I will go and do a pressure. I will straight this one. Look at my nose. It's not straight. I want Oibo nose. I'm going to break here. Do you? I will sit on in front of the mirror, be looking at my body. Where I should change, where I will do like this. If I'm sleeping, somebody knock my door. Before I get up from the bed, I will make sure that brown powder is by my side. Quick, quick. Let me put the mic. I do, I do ex, uh, example. From my bed, I always want my face to be looking presentable to people. So you reach to the point I say, ah, every time I'll be rubbing eye pencil, I want to do permanent eye pencil. So I want to do this eyebrow. Some people will see me and say, Mommy, you are putting something. This is a tat this is tattoo. I am praying, I'm looking for a way to remove it. When I went to France, they were telling me I have to redo it again. But some people say, Be careful, it's not good. False needs. Refilling all the time. When this one breaks, we go and refill. These are things I love doing. One time, my sister came to me, Sister Finda. She came across the holiness churches earlier before me. She came and was telling me, crying, and saying, Linda, because she knows I love God. My people, I love Jesus. If you see the way we'll be dancing behind speaker, giving flyer. If you see the way we'll be telling people, we'll be arguing for Jesus, for our pastor. On that rain, on that sun, we are giving program. Come to our crusade. We'll be dancing. And I was very zealous in the church. Any church I go to, people will know me. Sweeping church, singing in the choir. Oh, making people. Ah, we are there. Because I have one belief that this is, this is the house of Jesus. It's Jesus that will bless me. It's Jesus that will do this for me. And now it's Jesus that will take me to heaven. But when my sister come across the true word of God, she told me that Linda, we are walking in vain because she too was part of us in this sinful life. Linda. A pastor looked at her, a little pastor. He was he's a Nigerian pastor, a watchman pastor. Now found us, and that time he just came as a missionary in Sweden so to start their church. His name is Pastor Emeka. And started preaching to, he started with the youth in the area. It's a foreigner, I don't know people. So he started preaching to the youth and come across Sister Finda. Started teaching them the world, teaching them the world, teaching them the world. So these children begin to catch the fire, little, little youths. We started seeing their changes. My sister joined them. Finda came, she was crying, burning her things, trust us, stop whatever she was doing. I said, ah, ah, now madness, something don't go wrong. 
Finna, what happened? Ah, I want to go to heaven. I said, ah, what concern trusts us with heaven? What concern this dress with heaven? Why are you destroying your cloth? You will not understand. Make me to understand. My pastor said, when we came to this, a Nigerian pastor said, ah, this man has bring false doctrine to our country. Finna came and was telling me, ah, we are going to hell. That was my first time to hear hell. I don't know what was hell. Because in our church, they say hell is a scary thing. Don't talk about hell. So we all, is heaven. Heaven. In fact, heaven was a music in our church. We'll go to heaven on that beautiful day. Anybody that died, we'll say, oh, tell Jesus we are coming. Yes, that is it. In our church, somebody that will look at you, say, hey, he's seeing Jesus now. Our pastor say, look at now. He's lying with Jesus. With after we have painted the person dark, the we, we can design dead body back. If you see the dead body, you think he's sleeping. All kind of mascara, I pencil, false nails, put nails for him, lipstick, paint perfume, put make him look. Hey, people go to, in, in our country, people go to look who is the best dead body. Ah, this one is not paint and well, this one is not fine. No, this ah, they paint this one, not the best way paint and not paint and well. So it's a competition for your own dead corpse to dress the person very well. Because some people want to see, ha, ah, wow, the woman is just sleeping. This person paint them very well. We go like that. That is what we did in our country. So in our church, when possible like this, we believe the person is with Jesus. And I say, hey, now he's seeing Jesus. So they cover, they cover. We don't cry too much. We only miss you. But our heart is, ha, ah, it's with Jesus. We never know that this person is in danger. Finda spoke to me, talk, talk. The thing started entering me, fear. She will be crying, my sister will not deceive you. My sister will not deceive you. See how you are working. See how you will gather money. Sometimes I'll be sitting there counting school fee, counting my money, all my money getting from my friend. Finda will say, what are you doing? I say, ah, Papa, so we should go and sow seed. That in one more time, we will get this money double. He said he want to travel. We should, if we dress him, we will be travel next time. They will dress us. Finda said, Linda, this bewitchment. Go and pay your school fee. Don't go and give pastor. I said, leave me alone. Carry my TV. Go and sow seed. Anything pastor says, I will do. Believe me, I'm going to heaven. There is no day in the church they preach against stop boyfriend, stop drinking alcohol, stop doing this. No, it has never been in my life. Nobody has preached to me like that. So I didn't know those things. So Finda told me, and then it reached to a point where I have my encounter. On the 15th of February, I slept. I woke up with a strange pain. Death will not tell you when it's coming. That's why when you are alive like this, repent and give your life to Jesus. And don't bother about what people say. You can die before these people that are talking. And if you follow their talking, they are just pushing you away from God. So, what, one of the things that were hindering me, truly I should have given my life, because Finder was preaching very soon, I will be crying. But I have bad friends. My friends will come and say, ah, ah, what is this? Ah, don't listen to this girl. I will follow them. Boyfriend will deceive me, I will follow them. So, this day in my journey, when I woke up, I started feeling strange pain strange pain from nowhere you don't need to be sick a long time before you die you can wake up and die you can sleep and never wake up so i started feeling some kind of body movement that my body was not in good terms i started feeling i woke up i was not breathing well i'm not an asthmatic patient what is happening to me my heart is panting very fast i am sweating in my country we are island we have sea in the morning time we we even use blanket to cover but me i was sweating ah, ah. i started feeling my breath i was not breathing when my breath was seizing then i call on my younger sister she rushed into my room linda what happened i said pray for me I am choking. I'm not breathing well. I am dying. He said, ah, ah, dying like how? Okay, leave the bed. Let go to the parlor. I stretched my leg from the bed. To follow her, I fell down. I noticed two of my legs were not having any strength to carry me again. I started wondering what went wrong. Yesterday I was walking. What happened to my leg? It's like I don't have leg. I was not feeling anything. Even if you pinch me, I was not feeling any pain. But I can see my leg, but no life to strengthen me. I started crying. From there, I started feeling saliva, foamy saliva coming out of my mouth. Finda peeking to tears. I said, hey, 
people should come and help me because we just lost our grandmother Jan uh, January and me I'm having an encounter February and our both parents have died so Fina was like God don't do this to me God have mercy on me my only sister only two of them are my other sisters in America Linda what happened Linda talk to me God help me before you think my voice sees I was not speaking loud again I want to tell you when death is coming it's like a water it runs very fast before you think they say this person is not talking again ah our father in the hospital she's not, he's not looking like this he's not speaking again Finda, linda linda say something what is happening water was just rushing my eyes my voice was so low they will put their vo their ear like this they rush and bring spoon to put in my mouth because it was very terrible they never expected it even me i was looking at them in my spirit man i was strong my eyes will be following them they are running but even to raise my hand i cannot this is how they were going up and down finger now say linda let me lead you to christ say this prayer after me lord jesus to say lord jesus it's like i am learning how to speak my tongue, my teeth, every part in my mouth was very heavy. The tongue was put stone in my tongue. To say, Lord Jesus, I was struggling to call Lord Jesus. She will be shaking me. I saw my younger sister cry. Linda, don't do this to me. Linda, please say, Lord Jesus, somebody should help me. They will shout. A few of our neighbors, they run. Everybody, they just start. In fact, people don't know what to do. They were just standing, looking at me like this. Till I take a deep breath. When I took a deep breath, I didn't see them again. I just saw myself naked, joining, joining people that are moving. I don't know who they are, where they came from, but I know they are human beings like me. And I noticed all of us, we are naked in this journey. Nobody carry anything. I did not see anchor chief in anybody's hand. Not to talk about water or car. All of us, even panty, bra, was not on us. No slippers, no socks naked we were going i said ah, who are these people where are we going to but i saw myself following them as if all of us we have been doing this journey as we are going i started feeling heat this heat i said ah, where is this heat coming from i look up i didn't see this up. it was like a like like a like a cloud i don't have anything another planet which place is this? I look around me. I didn't see fire. I didn't see anything. I said, ah, this place is not looking like my country. Where am I? What is happening to me? When we keep on moving, the heat gets increased. Just imagine. Heat. The sun kind of heat. And I'm not wearing clothes. No tree to run to take shade. It was a vast open place. I said, ah, what is happening? My body was itching, paining. It's like I'm close to a fire like this that my back is almost getting burned. I was feeling a the pain. Then I said, no, me, I will not continue again. Let me go back where we are coming from so that maybe I can find a place I know. I make up my mind to stop my journey to turn back. Then I noticed my leg was going with them. Then I said, ah, what is happening? What is happening? I make up my mind. Like now when you are sitting there, you make up your mind. Your body will communicate with you. You will get up and went out and go out. But I make up my mind to stop. My legs say, no, we are going. I make up my mind to stop. My legs say, we are going. I don't know what power was controlling me. I don't know. No repentance in the grave. You have died. You have died. Over there, power control there. I say, ah. as we keep on moving again, I look in front of us. I started hearing sound, cry of people. I was looking where these people are crying from. They cry, you know that these are millions of people together. <laughs> I said, where are they crying from? I started fearing. I started fearing, which place, am, which place is this? And when I'm talking like this, confused looking, I want to tell you, nobody in that group says, sister, where are we? What is this? Salvation is personal. You where you are dying for husband, dying for man. If you are your husband, dying now, the, everybody will be crying because you have seen suffering coming. Somebody call me and say, sister, hey, young lady, what's your name? Where are you from? Yeah. 
But I can see everybody. We are everybody's looking. It's a strange place, it's not the world. You know, at, in, on the earth, when you leave Nigeria, you go to America, there are similarities. You see trees, you see mountains, you see houses, you see cars, it's not so. This one, you don't see anything like that. So when I look in front of us, I saw cave like a tunnel. This tunnel, you will see this road where we are trekking on. Will take us to that tunnel, but we are not appearing the outside. I said, which place is this? What is happening? As we keep on moving, keep on moving, then I saw demons. How they got there, how they appeared there, I cannot tell up it today. But I saw them standing in front of the cave. After I gave back, when, after I recovered, my, I, I gave my consciousness back, and I came back to myself, my life, into my body, I now put it together. So, oh, anywhere you are going to your last destination, they welcome you. When I was going to heaven, angels came and welcomed me. When you are going to hell, demons will welcome you. The demons that came there, fully standing. This was my first time seeing demons. I only see them on TV. But now I am seeing them live. They are going to touch me. My heart was panting as if it is a machine. In fact, I was wishing to die there. I was wishing to disappear because I was ignorant. I don't even know that was my solo. This is how many Christians died. They'll be asking, where am I? Where am I? They don't even know that they have left this world. Unprepared soul. You don't know you are going to see God. What will happen? You don't know anything. Because they don't teach you. You don't bother to study the word of God. You are just living your life carelessly. Death come and carry you. That was how I was living my life. I don't know anything about eternity. What will I say? What will I do? How will I appease God? What will if God asks me a question? I don't know the word. Nothing. My whole life now enjoyment. Going to church from church, go party this. I don't know anything. So when I was going, my soul, I never know this is my soul because I didn't know anything. So when these other people came in front to the demon. The way the demons was arresting them. You see, like when Boko Haram will rush at Christian committee, begin to chop, they cut, they shoot. In other angry way, the demons were doing. We are hitting this one, dragging this one, rushing at this. Two will be dragging this one. The son of people. But you people will be screaming, shouting, escape where? The leg was still going to them. This is my leg. Even when I was seeing the display of the demons with other people, I want to escape, run. My leg said, no way. That is where you are going. That is your destination. I was still going. With tears, with cry. When I mean tears, no water coming from my eye. But I was crying, wailing with my voice. God help me. Somebody help me. What is happening to me? Hey. But my leg was still going to them. It was a fearful thing. Fearful thing. Then, when I got close to one of the demons, very gigantic, very tall, big, I was like a baby under him. He bent his head like this. I see perfect hatred. I was shaking. God, he should not put his hand on me. Jesus, help me. Somebody should help me. To me, where am I? I'll be like, Jesus, help me! Jesus, help me! Help me! I'm finished. Somebody should help me. I was shaking. I just feel a push. He grabbed me from my leg. My back landed at the ground. He carried my leg and started dragging me like a dead animal. Was dragging me gently, but when he pressed his hand in my leg. I feel his nails entering my body like, uh, like a knife passing through. It was very sharp. It pierced my body. I screamed, I shouted. That is pain number one we started. As he was dragging me, dragging me, as soon as we enter that dark tunnel, I noticed instantly that this heat was coming from this whole place. At the journey of hell, the heat from hell begin to welcome us. Immediately, I enter that dark tunnel. All things called saliva dry up. My mouth dry. My body began to shrink like stockfish. I begin to get dry, dehydrated, in a way that I was panting for air. You, you, in hell, you cannot. 
<laughs> the, the hair that is in hell, when you do like this, you inhale it, it's like a sulfur fire. Like they carve your nose, put it on top of a gas. So you don't even want to breathe that here, but you want to breathe fresh air, but you cannot breathe fresh air. The air in hell is hot than a bakery. We have not entered fire yet, just the environment. Only the environment of hell. When I imagine on my own, my husband can be my witness. Sometimes I sit down with a cry once. Mommy, what happened? Anybody die, they call you. I said, Nobody die. I don't want to die. I am imagining hell. Sometimes he said, That is very good. I like that imagination. Keep imagining I'm going out. Mommy, keep it. That will keep you. Daddy will tell me that will keep you from sin. I like that. Sometimes when they will be telling me happy Mother's Day, I imagine my mother that is now burning still. I started crying fresh. I said, Look at me now. Look at me now. I'm here. And my mother, I know she's somewhere. I left her in sorrow. She's still in sorrow. It's a place I don't want you to go. It's a place I cannot describe. I'm only trying. It's a place that human beings cannot describe the suffering, the way God pour anger in hell for Satan. It's a place God, even Jesus himself, is crying. He's crying. He said, I didn't make this place for them. I poured the powerful, painful, like sulfur that no pain has ever caused any man for dealing with Satan. But my children, Satan, look at the place and say, yeah, only me will not come here. Your children, I will bring them here. All of us will come and suffer here. That is what Satan is doing with your life. The place that God has set for him, Satan wants you to go there. Then as we get in, I was not seeing the demon again total darkness but I only felt his hand still on me but between me and him, even my surrounding, I was not seeing I was seeing darkness as we get more deeper, he was turning me, I was in tunnel, we are going down we are not going up those days, when I was testifying in 2013, nothing called scriptures I don't know any scriptures, I didn't have any idea of any scriptures children of God were the ones saying this is of God because I was a novice I don't know Bible. I didn't know Bible. I go to church. My pastor was my Bible. I've never gotten a big Bible like this all through my life. My Bible is this missionary Bible, Catholic Bible, that New Testament. Put it in my small bag. Finish. Go to church. If pastor talk about Genesis, I'm out. If he talk about Matthew, I'll open to the Bible. So, nothing Bible, scriptures, or the word of God I knew. But when I was testifying, people that know God know this is of God. So you that you are saying nothing can happen like this. Nobody can die and come back. God is doing it now. It has not happened, but God is doing it now for saving you. God loves man so much that now it's okay. Die. Go and see and come back. I, I hear it from man. Eternity. But now, let me reveal eternity to man so that man will save. Man will be saved. But you are still doubting. So when he was turning me, turning me, I was going down. The light that is in hell is reddish than the color red. The flame. My brother, my sister, my heart, my body was so light. Like when you carry a leather, put on top of the fire. When the fire heat is squeezing the leather, my body was so light. My body was so light. As if it's dropping for me. The heat has made my body to cook. I was in pain. As they are dragging me, it's like my skin is peeling off. The heat was too much. I was suffocating. The, 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 the hair that is entering my nose, it's like I am inhaling fire, scattering my brain. The heat I've never felt in my whole life. After some time, he dropped me, he released his hand on me. And then I landed on people, the shifting of people. When I look around, the first thing that slapped my mind is the mystery I saw. Three or four mysteries, if I can remember. Let me go on. The first mystery I saw, I saw fire, endless fire. The fire is bigger than Suleja, bigger than Abuja. The fire don't have ending. It's just that like when you are those that have gone to America, when you are passing through from Europe to America, you will take like two hours, you are crossing sea. The fire is so wide, 
The Bible makes it to know that hell has enlarging herself to swallow more. I want to tell you there are billions of people in hell. And hell still has space. I didn't see the end of the fire. I looked this other side. I did not see the end of the fire. I turned. Why I turn it? It's for escape route. Where will I run out of this place? I turned like this. I didn't see the end of the fire. Fire surrounded us everywhere. Even the entrance we used to come in. I cannot find it again. That's why the Bible says Jesus is the only person that has the key of hell and death. Only Jesus knows the gates of hell to open and release you. We read the book here now. Jesus said, I have cast the demon into hell. Put them there as a prison for a certain time. They cannot come out. No way out. Suffering upon suffering. I started crying. In hell, you cry, but water don't come out of your eye. That's why the Bible says they will gnash their teeth. They will yell. Yell means you will be crying. You will be shouting. But no water. When I saw this fire, then I saw another mystery. I saw human beings inside this fire burning, mixing, like when they are cooking food, like soup, when the fish and the meat is turning upside down in the boiling mode. I saw people mixing with the fire, going up, coming down. I saw people, fire have covered them. I saw people, when they are coming out of the fire, when they shout, mercy, fire will be coming and they have drowned with fire. When somebody drowned in the water, when you press the stomach, it will be vomiting water. Is it not so? This one, they are drowned in fire. There is no water in hell. So when you are deep inside the fire, you are entering fire, not water. So when they are struggling to come out, they are vomiting fire. Mercy! God! Have mercy! I will not do it again! Jesus! It is hot here! Say not water! God! Our punishment is more than our sin! Have mercy! I will not sin again! It's on earth! We are ashamed to call our sin on earth. They will tell somebody a witch. You say, I'm not a witch. They are lying against me. Brother, you're a fornicator. I'm not a fornicator. Because of shame and pride. Go and see them in here. They are calling and say, God, I'm a witch. Send me now. I will disgrace myself. I will not hide again. I never knew it was like this. Jesus, I'm a liar. Jesus, I'm a robber. I will not steal again. Oh, God, take me out of this place. Jesus, 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 have mercy on me. I'm an idol worshiper. Jesus, I will not sin again. I'm a false prophet. Oh, Jesus, send me back in hell. Open confession. I look at the people. Who are they still living? Who are these people? I've never seen it in my life like this. I said, God, take God took me from grassroots. I'm not a church. I don't know Bible. I didn't know Bible. What I was seeing, I've never come across it. Maybe if it was Sister Finda, she have gotten knowledge about heaven and hell. Maybe she would say something. This one, I was looking at it as something is going on with me. I don't understand. I was seeing human being burning, burning, vomiting fire. Some of them, their eyes have removed. Their body is dropping. Their skin is falling. They have burnt. Some of them are scalded. Some of them, the fire is turning them. They have become roasted like animals. Some of them, you cannot recognize. Is he a man or a woman? Oh, who is this person? They have burnt. Their head has been split. Their body is dropping, looking like roasted animal. They have become tatter. They have become rotten. I was looking at them. But I look at these people. I was expecting them to die. I was expecting them not to be living again. I was expecting them to be lifeless. But I saw them in motion. I saw them. They are strong. I saw them crying. They are crying for mercy. God sent us back. I look at them. I say, what am I seeing? Why are they still living? Who is punishing these people? What is happening to me? Oh, please take me out of this place. For the heart mercy of me. I was confused. I was afraid of them. Looking at them, I was afraid of them. 
the, the human being have been born. I can't go close. I was afraid of their look. Even them, they look like demons to me. The way they have been born. Unless they introduce themselves to you, say, I was a beauty, I was a beauty pattern. I was the finest woman in the earth. But look at me now. I am looking like an animal. I have been roasted like beef. I am looking like dead, like sore all over my body, rotting corpse. But he or she is still pleading. Please God, take me out of here. Jesus, give me a second chance. Take me back to the wall. I will repent. Jesus, I will not sin again. Jesus, I will live a holy life. Jesus, I will confess my sin. Jesus, take me out of here. Jesus, please have mercy on me. Jesus, my punishment is more than my sin. Some are there for holy anger. Some are there for masturbation. Some are there for lying. Some are there for worldliness. Some are there for second marriage. Some are there for divorce. Some are there in different ways. They are crying, God have mercy on us. As I was seeing these things, I said to myself, what am I doing here? Who brought me here? What have I done to myself? God have mercy on me. As I was busy crying, I saw three demons coming towards me. I was shaking. I can't run. Where will I run to? I was shaking. What have I done? Oh, God, save me. Somebody should help me. I was hitting myself. Linda, wake up. If you are sleepy, wake up. What is going on with me? How did I get here? Who brought me here? I don't belong to these people. Who are these people? They look fearful to me. I never know. My mother is there. I never know. I never know. I'm seeing people like know. I was crying. I said, God, show me mercy. And then the people came towards me. And when the demon came to me, it was two of them hold my hand like this. I started dragging me. And they dragged me to a place. As soon as we reached to the place, they chained my hand like this. They chained my other hand like this. They chained my leg. They chained my leg and opened me very wide. And then I was naked. And then one of the demons came in front of me. And when he came in front of me, he did his hand to me like this. Linda, you disobedient child. Are you not afraid to disobey God? And I said to myself, how oh, did I disobey God? I go to church. I pray night. I sit in the choir. I sit in church. I clean pastor house. I go for errands. I come to church prayer meeting. How did I disobey God? I want to know because these are the things my pastor was telling me. Make sure you come to church. Make sure you have a tight card. Make sure that you, the church know that you are a member. Make sure that because he was just saying those things. I did my best to please God in the church. I thought I was pleasing God. So he must say to me, are you not afraid of disobeying God? I wonder, how did I disobey God? I've not disobeyed God. Anything our pastor say, God said I should tell 31 people here to sow seed. Even if I don't have it, I will stand up. Because I know, they say, God say, how did I disobey God? I was wondering. And then the demon said to me, there are two types of sinful life you were living on earth. One, when they warn you, you say you didn't believe. But you will believe here today. The other type of sinful life you were living, you know it is sinful. But you didn't repent of it, you die in it. You know anger, lying, unforgiveness, all this fornication, all are sinful, drinking of alcohol. And truly, I know they were sinful. But how to stop them, I didn't know. Because in my church, not teaching on those things. And then the demon said to me, the other sin, the other type of sinful life you were living, when they warn you, you say it doesn't matter, it is a lie. And then he now said to me, the air that you die with, as you say you die with, it flashed now to me that I have died. So I've left the wall. I can see my siblings again. What is happening to me? God, is he how dead is? What is happening? Oh God, no, you can't kill me. God, please, I can't die now. Oh God, God, have mercy on me. And then the demon said to me, 
when you were on earth before you died the air that was on your head how did they call it on earth I didn't say anything he looked at me and said they call it false air don't you know the Bible say nothing make it a lie we go to that holy city and that is my property my younger sister warned me did that remove this thing on your body when I asked my pastor he said does it matter you that give your life to a pastor you that follow fake pastor your own is fit in fact and pity Christians the devil said to me nothing make it a lie we go to the holy city and he laughed and said I have deceived many and many are coming here I started weeping I regretted the day I disbelieved my sister the day I believed my fake pastor than my only sister. And then he said to me, didn't the Bible warn you not to put the accosting on your body? I don't know what was the accosting. I never know. God warned our foremothers, fathers, to remove this dwelling on their body. I never know God don't want us to put this thing on our body. It was Satan, demon, was preaching the Bible to me. Demons was preaching the correct Bible that God, how God wants us to live, which a pastor didn't tell me all my life in the church. You think you are smart. Satan knows this Bible more than you. The same Satan that is making you to disobey God is the same one that will be laughing at you and say, you forget that the Bible says you should not smoke. Why were you smoking? But he was the one tempting you because you know he's tempting you against something that God will hold you responsible for. And the same demon was telling me, didn't the Bible say you should take away the accosting from your body? Who told you to mark your body? Didn't the Bible tell you you should not mark your body? Are you the owner of this body? The one that made you say, don't mark. How will you mark your body when you are not the owner of the body? Are you, and then he did like this, are you not afraid of God? I said, my own has finished. The preaching of my sister was ringing in my ears. Linda, don't put tattoo on your body. Linda, stop marking your body. Linda, stop. I put the area on my nose. Remove this one. Wanted to put on my tongue. Linda, stop this. I said, leave me with my body. The temple is not this, this art that takes to heaven. Leave me. Let me decorate myself. The demons was telling me that jewel in piercing is of, of Satan. And then he came to me and said, did the Bible say you should not put on trousers? You are disobedient. Do you know how many people you have made them to fall? Didn't the Bible say you should not make your brother to stumble? Your dressing was causing people to stumble. You are an agent of the kingdom of darkness. Some of you, when they call you an agent, you think it's a bad thing. Your property you are carrying that making people to loss is of Satan. And then Satan told me, did the Bible say that you should not commit fornication? These were my sins that were playing before me. Why were you committing fornication? Don't you know that sex is for married people, really legal married people? You were not married. You were busy committing sex, causing people to stumble. I will torture your private part here. You will regret why you have that private part and why you use it in sin. Satan come again and look at me and say, didn't the Bible say you should not put harmful thing in your mouth? You like always being high, putting hot thing in your mouth. We will continue to give you hot thing here. Bible says you should not take alcohol. Bible says you should not give your neighbor alcohol. Bible says you should not smoke. But you disobey God. And then the last one, he look at me and say, you are a murderer. You are a murderer. Then I say to him, I'm not a murderer. I've never killed anybody in my life. Have mercy on me. When I say have mercy on me, he say, I don't show mercy. I don't know how to give mercy. I don't have power to show mercy. And I say to him, 
I am an orphan. Nobody to take care of me. That was the reason why I was living this worldly life. But as I have heard now, I will not do it again. Please send me back. I will not do it again. He now say, I say, I don't have power to give you second chance. Only that righteous man have power to show you mercy. And he said to me, you are a murderer. And I said to him, I have never killed in my life. Then they laugh at me, three of them. I say, please, you people should believe me. I'm saying it. I have never killed anybody in my life. And then he said to me, you have never killed anybody in your life. I said, no, I have never killed anybody in my life. They laugh again and look at me and say, you have never. In fact, they were very angry now. I said, you say you have never. I said, I have never. And then they say, what about the abortions you were doing? Were you killing animal in your stomach? Or you were killing innocent children in your stomach? The way you kill them painfully, I am going to torture you here. You will feel the pain. I regret my worldly life. I came to know that nothing seen pains. I came to hate the day I follow worldliness. Because I didn't see any benefit in it at all. And then the demon said to me, I'm going to start your torturing from your head. Because of your head, you did not believe to serve God in righteousness. You like designing your head. And I will continue to design it here for you. And this is true. When Finda will be telling me, you have to stop all these things, I look at myself, hey, without putting attachment, I can't do this holiness. I will forget about the holiness. Because I was in love with makeup, love with attachment, love in barbing my hair, tinting it. I like making my hair looking all this worldly way. And the demon said, because you love your hair, I will torture you with hair. Holiness women, some of you are backsliding because of this hair. Don't put rubber thread secretly, you are still putting it. Don't palm your hair, you are still doing it. Don't dye your hair, you are still doing it. Some women in this movement will go to hair just for this, their head. Any kind of thread they see, hair is just a thread. Who told you? Satan know you know that attachment is a sin. It's coming into the way you will not see clearly. If you are not smart against the devil, it will overthrow you. I started crying. I started crying. And then he turned his back. I went. My eyes followed him. I looked at him when he was going. I saw they display different kind of instruments inside the fire. And the eyes of them were so red. You know these goldsmiths, when they remove their iron from the fire, and the iron is red. Then he carry one of the spear, the iron, they are very sharp, and turned to me. My heart, my brethren, I have never feel a pain like this. Nobody should go to hell, I'm telling you. I suffer for this testimony. My calling was not an easy one. God allowed me to suffer here. I was pattern here, if you believe me or not, but I know what I passed through. I never knew I would be whole like human being again like this. I look at myself, I am finished. And then the demon told I was bringing the iron to me, and I said, God, Jesus, no allow me to put it on me. I was chained. I can't move. I was just shaking myself there. Jesus, I want you to put it on me. Jesus, have mercy on me. And one of them came and said, don't call that righteous man here. He will not answer you. When you were on earth, they were telling you to repent and forsake your sin. You had in your heart. He too had decided to hide in his heart. Take a look at those ones in the fire. Then he showed me them. He said, these are human beings like you that live on earth before. So
Some have been there for thousand years. Some hundred years. Some twenty years. They have called on that righteous man for how many years? He have not answered them because they are doomed. You that you are just coming and you are calling on that righteous man. Don't waste your time. That righteous man. And who is the righteous man? They can't call his name Jesus. They call him righteous man. Even in hell, they know Jesus is righteous. He said, that righteous man will not answer you. I raise up my mouth. I said, Jesus, I am sorry. I have seen everything what my sister was telling me. In fact, I have no more than what she was telling me. But God, you know I was an orphan. Have mercy on me, oh God. Papa, have mercy on me. I will not do it again. God, send me back to the world. I will live a holy life. I don't care what people say. Father, I will not have boyfriend. I will not lie. I will not smoke. God, I will not go back to night club. I will not commit any sin again. Jesus, I will live a holy life. Trust me. God, just send me back. I will do, I will say what like this, say what like this. I will not feel any God. I will not feel any presence of God. I will not hear any voice say, okay, I have had you. I will speak. I will cry, cry, call on him. He will not say anything. I will enter into blasphemy. I said, God, you are wicked. God, you never send your agent to me. God, you say you will never leave us neither for second. Papa, why are you suffering so? Papa, why are you suffering us? God, our, our punishment is more than our sin. Papa, have mercy on us. After some time that we cost God, I was in pain. And then the devil came with the iron and said, on earth, you like them out, they will design your head. You like them changing your hairstyle. You waste your time on vanity. The time you will take to design your head, you never know anything about God. And it's true. Those days, no time for the Bible. I don't have time to, to read Bible. I thought Bible is only for pastors. They should read, but we will only go to church and receive blessing and go back. Many of you sitting here, that is how you take God. You don't have Bible. You don't read Bible. You don't even have time for Bible. Your own is business, money, work, finish, come home, eat, sleep. You leave this thing that will save you. This is the only book that we use to judge every man, including Muslims. The Bible. And many don't know the Bible. And then they grab my head. When they hold me, I want to tell you, they are very strong. You can't shake. When they press me like a machine press my head. When they hold my head like this, even me cannot shake because I can feel their power, their strength. And then the other one carry the spear, the hot side, and started breaking my skull. When they are breaking it, I am feeling it. I know something hot is tearing me. The pain of breaking this head, that if I'm on art, they can't break my head, I'm alive. I feel them poaching it on my head. I feel them open my head. That pain that we will feel on earth, when you die, you are carrying that same feeling. God did not take that feeling from you. Because God wants you to feel punishment. If I pinch you now, you shout, ah! When you die, your soul still have that same feeling. So when you are in hell, whatever they do to you, they carry a knife, chook you. The way you will shout, scream on earth, you'll be shouting, ah, my side oh, my side oh. This is how when the demon will insert knife in you, tear you, that is the same pain you will feel. But the painful thing is, on earth, you will go to the hospital, they will kill you, take Panadol, the pain will subside. In hell, no Panadol. No Panadol. No sorry. No stop. Pain continues. So when they touch on my head, when my head was tearing, the only thing I can do to quench my pain, and I never knew a Bible has mentioned it before me, I have my encounter. They will notch their teeth in hell. You know what that notching means? Some of you think that you, they don't understand what God said, they will notch their teeth in hell. You will grind your teeth in hell. Why will you grind your teeth in hell? It's to quench the pain that will be passing through your body. 
when the demons they inside that hot tire in my head i don't know what to do i was just my teeth because i was like this so it was my teeth i used to hold the pain passing through my body so when they put it on me i said no mercy god i mercy on me god drop and die but i noticed i was still having strength to be at the pain and then i remember my younger sister called and said to me one time as a leader i want to tell you about the things he held so that you fear this god he said linda he held if they caught you you will not die god called that place everlasting torment anything that will not die is everlasting they will pierce you, they will tear you, they will chop you, they will pieces you. Your body will be whole again because that is how God wants you to be. You will continue to be suffering pain, but you will not die. I look at my sister and say, which kind of wickedness is that? They told us in the Bible, in the church, that God loves us, he cannot suffer us like that. God is not a wicked God. How will God, they will be cutting us, piercing us, and we will not die. Finna, leave that thing, it's not true. Finna say, oh God, open that eyes. God opened my sister's eyes, did I cry? I can remember she cried for more than years. She was crying for me, God saved my sister. So when I was in hell, I was seeing this thing practically happening to me. I regretted why I didn't believe her at that time. As if it not said it. When I look at my body, I saw my body, my scores, breaking into pieces, falling down. And then all of a sudden, I feel my head like magic is getting whole. It's fixing again. And then the devil say, you like taking hot things in your mouth. I'm going to continue to give you hot things. That is all this hard liquor, this warm, this whiskey, this, uh, this, this alcohol we used to drink to say we are big girls following big men. So the demon now came with a bottle. And when he bring the bottle and say to me, drink and then I turned to him. I said, I will never drink again. <laughs> Please have mercy on me. I will not drink it again. Please, I will not do it again. I don't want to drink it. I don't want to drink it ever again in my life. I will not do it. Then the demon said to me, I command you drink. You are refusing. Let me tell you, I rule here. Whatever I say to you, you do it. I said drink. And then they carried the bottle and opened my mouth and when they were pouring it it was a liquid fire hot like acid more than acid as they were putting it on my body my mouth my tongue my this was falling my mouth was it will do like like when you drink acid I it will form and it will be dropping your body parts this is how i noticed my body was dropping the fire was melting me i was shouting everything was just melting in my eye i noticed my mouth is dropping i was screaming shouting what is happening to me what am i seeing why am i still alive god why are you punishing me right here? god look at my body god why am i still living god something is going wrong god have mercy on me when i saw it i said god what is happening to me i cannot continue like this after some minutes I said, oh, something is wrong with me god have mercy 
show me. And then the demon say, I have not started yet. I have not started yet. You love the world. You love the pleasure of the world. As you busy spend your time on vanity, I will teach you lesson that you're supposed to have spent your life for God, not vanity. I look at myself. I say, when will I come out of this? When will my sorrow end? Um, how many years did I even spend on art? Even on art, I was not that rich. What is even the pleasure of life I lived? What is the enjoyment self? It's not even up to my sorrow free. Why did I live my life like this? I did not even continue your enjoyment. I did not even have the money I was looking for. I was not even enjoying the way they think enjoyment was. Father, now see me, I am suffering more than my sin. My suffering was too much. And then the demon say, who told you to pierce your body? You like piercing, piercing. God wants you not to mark your body. You put tattoo, mark your body. Who told you to mark your body? I am going to continue to design your body here. And then he turned his back. And carry another iron. Like looking like a pressing iron. And then he brought it to me. All the parts of my body I tattooed. All the piercing I did. Even the one I removed later. I was putting hearing on my nose. I removed that later. All those parts of my body. Other parts I did not put any piercing or tattoo. Satan was busy pressing iron on me. When he pressed it, you will hear my body will do like fish inside. Oh, shh. Ah. Ah. Oh, God, what will I say that people understand? God, what will I say that people understand? God, what will I say? Jesus, what will I say that man will understand what I pass through? Jesus, what will I say? What will I say? What will I say? For the big day to do, no, oh God, I wish that man was here, I wish that people would sleep, and go to hell and see for themselves, I'm telling you, nobody will preach to nobody, I wish that sometimes, I say God, let man go to hell, let these stubborn sinners, we are tired of preaching to them, let them sleep and appear in hell, nobody will want nobody again. Everybody will be working for their salvation. Everybody will fear God. Including the Muslims. When they finish with me, no strength to shout. It's like, since I was born, I've never drank water. I've never had peace. I was hopeless. I was weak. I started having hatred for my pastor, for my siblings, my boyfriend, my friends that hinder me not to know God. But I was hating the world. I even hated my parents that give back to me. I joined God. I said, God, I didn't beg you to create me. Why did you make me and then abandon me? Well, you should have just left me like that, not created. God, what have I done that look at me like this? I hated everything I was doing. I, be I, I hated myself. Why did I not believe Finda? What is the benefit of the Wivona? Where is Wivona here? Why is even my boyfriend? Why is he here. What is the essence of having boyfriend keeping money in the bank? Where is the money now? Even the house will suffer me and my sister to get my siblings. What is the benefit now? I cannot even do anything. I am useless. Where is the house now? Where is the money now? Where is the boyfriend that was saying you will love me forever? What is my life now? Where are the friends now that was telling me, no, no, I don't follow your sister. Who's holy? Holy be there. Where are the people now that were hindering me not to serve God? I was just crying. Where is my pastor that was telling us that then you will stand before God for us. Where is he now? I was alone. Nobody. If not God that sent me back, they would have been giving good obituary about me. Very nice girl coming to church, singing in choir, and I will be beating and burning in hell. I will be crying. Why is there? They will be sharing food. People are eating. They are carrying my picture. That's why I'm telling you, is your family member that are laughing at you, your husband, is only to stand and give obituary about you. Only you will be suffering it here. 
They will never say bad thing about you. But you know you are not going to heaven. And then they wind me up. Raise my leg up like this. The demon say raise her up. And then they scatter my leg very wide. And then the demon said to me. When you go to the hospital. They will use fire in you to kill innocent children. You wicked girl. The same way those babies feel pain before they die. That is the same way I will torture you. This your private part was given for your husband alone. You were busy making both married men and other people to fall. You were a wicked and evil girl. You, you are not afraid of God. I will torture this your private part. I will insert iron into it. I will remove until my hand get tired. He turned his back. I started meditating. I was not a bad person. I looked up. I said, God, I was only a worldly person, but I was not a bad person. I am sorry. God have mercy on me. I have seen it all. I have known it all. I don't even need preachers to preach to me. Even if I be alone on this earth, nobody wants to associate with me. God, I will stand for you. I will not bother what people say. God, just give me a second chance to go back. Jesus, I will never sin again. I will fear you. I will live all my life for you. I will worship you. God, I will tell the world everything I have seen here. God, I will preach your word. God, I will work for you. Anything you say, I will do. God, please just get me out of here. I was crying. I was begging. And then the demon came up and stood under me and said, I have told you not to be bothered. You're calling that righteous man. He will never answer you. Your own time is finished on earth. Your chapter has closed. God is only concentrated on those that are on earth. And that's why we are there deceiving many so that they will be doomed like you. That's why I tell you, if you don't love holiness, you are doomed. Satan is battling with man on earth. And then he brings the spear. Very long bow, like bow and arrow. Very hot. And then he said to me, I should take pleasure of having sex when you are not married. I will do the same practice here. I carry the spear, insert it. My old body was like I hold the eye tension of Nepal. When that thing entered me, my body, if it was on earth, instant I will die. Because the thing enter me and it pain me, my life will have gone. But because in hell, God said we will not die. That was why I feel that pain, but I didn't die. I have to tell you the punishment people are going through in hell. What sinners, witches and wizards, what they are suffering in hell. They deceive Satan, deceive them. They die and go and see the true God that Satan was just lying to them. The suffering men are going through and robbers, kidnappers, drunkards, evil women, man, sinners, prostitutes, homosexual lesbians. Hey, you that like juju practice. What people that are out of the way of God are suffering in hell. In hell, there is no death. It's just like now, Boko Haram will be cutting your throat, cut your head. You feel the pain, and then the head join again, and they come again and cut it again. You feel the same pain. Are you imagining what people are passing through in hell? Go to your house and put your hand in the fire. The fire will burn your hand. After some time, put it again. Will you do that? But in hell fire, they are burning. 
burning, burning. Some have been there for 100 years, they are still burning. No water, fire is their friend. And they are still living, they are still talking. Some of you will say, it's a lie. How can somebody be doing like this? I beg, give it to Christ. Don't do hard in hard because your own will be more worse. If you doubt what I'm telling you, I was the accuser. Everything I disbelieve, finna, finna, beg. I can somebody, ah, what kind of thing is it? Finna say, oh God, and God really opened my eyes. You see me crying for how many years? Anytime I'm testifying, I'm feeling it fresh because I want people to believe this thing. I want you to save your soul. I don't have any benefit. What is it? Some people say it's for money. Leave those people. Give your life to this Jesus and escape this error, this horror I am telling you about. When they insert it, remove. Insert, remove. Insert, remove. My eye open. My mouth open. As they say, uh, uh, they said, uh, I was just there. I was hopeless. My boyfriend was not there. I suffer alone. And then they dropped me down. Then they told me, when we drop you inside a fire, you will be there to the end of time. But Jesus answered my prayer. I never know Jesus was hearing me. I never know God was the one that allowed me to pass through this for a purpose like this. I never know I was passing through an encounter. As I was there, a power lifting me up from the flame. I was coming up. If you see me, you can't recognize me. My siblings that know me cannot recognize me, but I can recognize you. Even when you cannot recognize me, I have been battered, wounded, and burned. But I, my senses are still correct. So as I was lifted up, I thought they are taking me to another department for torture. I have given up in life. I have cried. I was just regretting. My imagination was just on the earth. How I wasted all my time. I began to see vanity. I hated everything called worldliness. The pleasure of the earth. Fleshly pleasure. I hated everything. So when I stand, when the team power carry me, I landed before a man wearing white. Looking at me. The man was shining like a moon. Looking at me and shook his head and turned his back and started going. I thought it's a ghost, it's a spirit, it's another punishment department. I did not understand. But I was looking at him. I said, why this man is not dirty? Why is he not naked? Why is he looking glorious? Why is he white? This kind of white, I've never seen this kind of white. I look at his body, I've never seen this kind of skin texture. He's looking glorious. What is happening to me? God, where am I going to? As he moved, he didn't say follow me. But my spirit, my, my heart said follow. I started following him. When I started following him, when we are walking, it's like on top of a bridge. And when we are walking, I look left, I look right. I saw burning. People are yelling, crying. I saw the suffering of hell. I was seeing people out there suffering like what I was passing through. I will see demons busy torturing other people, and we were crossing above their head. I said, Ah, they didn't see me. Nobody said, Hey, come back. Where are you going? The man was leading me out. How did he know that road? How did he know the entrance and the way out? I cannot tell because hell is dark, covered with fire. Then, as we were going, I follow him. This is how we walk, walk, walk. As soon as we came out of that place, it's like a heavy wind was waiting for us outside. As soon as I came out to know we are out in a place, a wind took us in a force. Not that we were flying, but it's like a force was carrying us. I was not knowing the force. But we were just going up. And then I noticed we passed through the cloud. When we passed through the cloud, 
we were going not in holy knots we were not inside a glass we were not inside a plane but two of us just stand like this we were lifted up so as we are going like this we pass the cloud we go then we stop then it started walking but he didn't say a word to me as he was walking i was following him walking i was following him immediately we get close to where we were going from far off the glitteriness of heaven the way heaven was glittering begin to dislive diggerly on my eyes this day on my eyes from far far off i said wow whose place which kind of place is that which city is this there is a beautiful home in a faraway land where the scent of god are gathering yeah the sweet melody they are singing unto jehovah they are giving praises forevermore. Hey, there is a beautiful home in the faraway land where the saints of God are gathering. Where the sweet melody they are singing unto Jesus Christ. They are giving praises forevermore. Indeed, there's a beautiful home. I cannot describe it, but all I can tell you, struggle to go there. You will never regret. You will never miss anything on this earth. Even if you build mansion, when you go to heaven, you will be thanking God that you are in heaven. I am running up here now. Then I saw this beautiful city far off. Capture my attention so greatly. I want to know where is this place? Why we we on earth we don't I don't know this place. Is there a place that people know like it? I was just looking at it. When we get close to the gate, the gate don't have only one texture, one beauty, one design. Like now you will say, when you are coming to Sule, there you see one black gate. One year black gate, next year black. No. In heaven, the gate changes its colors, its beauty, its texture, its design. In a twinkle of an eye. As I was standing there, I cannot count how many times the gate changed into different designs. So that one captured my heart. I was just looking. The thing was doing, no, okay, you are playing game for children. You'll be changing with your remote. The thing was changing before me. I said, wow, wow, see precious stone. I cannot call the names of the stone because on earth I only know diamond, gold. These are stones that I cannot call. I don't know them. But you see them powerful, glittery. I said, wow. Then they change the glass. I said, oh my God. I was just there. Then all of a sudden, I saw lights from inside that city was coming like the sun far running to come and meet me. As I was looking at it, the light was coming, fuel, coming to me. As they get closer to me, I came to notice it was not a light. It was only the face of the angels that were shining. So when they get close to me, I look at them and say, wonderful. Me, I am seeing angels. So this is true. The first thing my mind run to, they say angels have wings. My eye went to their wings. Truly, they have wings and they have hands. So the winds do like this and they came down on their legs with a great good smile. A smile that you will know that I am love. A smile that you will know that these people truly love me. It is not a hypocritical smile that will give, hmm, how are you? It's a smile that when you see them, they look at you with their eyes, they smile to you, you will know that I've come to a place of love. I felt their smile as I am okay. I am I don't need to bother. The fear I came with, where are they carrying me to? Is he another torture? But when they smile to me, I say, Ah, I am safe here. You are safe in heaven. Work for this Jesus all you can. Don't bother, don't fear. When you die, you will be resting in heaven. And then they touch my body. What they did to me up to today. If I said I will lie, I cannot tell. I was looking at them with their smile, how they passed their hand on me. Either they do magic on me or they did something on me. My attention did not go to what they did to me. But all of a sudden, I noticed I was whole. 
my body transformed. I was covered my nakedness. I look at myself. I, I, I look at them. Want to say, what did they do to me? I cannot tell. Immediately, I'll look at them, look at myself. They get open for itself and the light flash on me. I didn't see those angels again. I was left alone. And when that light flashed on me, the light brought me down on my knee. The power of God. At the mention of the name of Jesus. Every knee must bow. In the presence of God, every knee must bow. When that light shone on me like this, I tried to block the light. The light turned my hand into transparency. My hand was transparent. This hand. Can you block the light and you begin to see your blood? But when I block the light of God to block it, my hand become like glass. I noticed I was not able to block it. But this light, I can block it now. I cannot, it cannot penetrate on my eyes. But that light, when I do that, this is like it's passing through my hand to flash on my eyes. I said, when I tried to open my eyes, it was painful to my eyes. It's like when you want to open your eyes, like they're using a knife to remove your eyes. Then I will close it again. But even when I close it, I can feel the reflection in the, in my, passing through my, my eyes. So I will want to try to close it, but nothing I do, did that was blocking that light. So I was just there saying, which kind of light is this? My eyes, what kind of light is there? That is the light that shone upon salt and make him blind. You can't contend with God. We have not seen God. You have not seen this God. That's why when they are talking, you say, leave me alone. Witches and witches will be having mind to do evil in the house of God. You don't even know God is patient with you. You think Satan himself that you are afraid of. Fear God. When God appears, Satan will run and leave you there. Come to this Jesus today. You are safe. Then as a busy struggling like this, a voice spoke through the light and said, Welcome, my daughter, Linda. It was an earthquake. Shaking. Shaking at the voice. The cloud everywhere. Like, we are, like the wall is going to somersault. I kneeled down there. I said, which kind of voice is this? Then, immediately, as I tried to look at the light again, somebody has blocked the light for me. When I look, my, le my eyes go straight to, because I was kneeling that the person is very tall. My eyes went straight to the knee. I looked down on his feet. I look at the feet. He was having two mighty wounds, like a hole on the two palm. Then I look at him. I notice this other person standing, his own body texture, I cannot describe, is more powerful than the one I saw in hell. Then I said, ah, this one is not even carrying flesh like that. It's like a glistery, like when you shave glass to a human being. You put precious stone in. I don't know how to describe the skin the way I saw Jesus. Then I started glancing to go up. I noticed the gown was over white. Then I go up. When I reach at his face, I noticed the face was bringing light in every part of his face. The light was very powerful. Every part of the face was shining. Like when children in the world would draw sun. You know what we were drawing the sun? We were giving him zigzag like this. You understand? When we are drawing sun now, the sun, as little children, we will be giving the sun zigzag around the, 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 the... Yeah, so you will see those things all over his face like that. Light coming out. Not that he have holes on his face. Not that he have holes on his face. But the face produce lights. That when I look at his hair, the hair look as if they planted light in his hair. It's not a white hair. It's more than a white, more than a wool. No one black is inside. The white is looking like, you know, like when they say cloud, it's like the hair is full like a smoke. It's, it's, it's bringing out light, fragments of its own. Then, when he, I was still kneeling down, when he stretched his hand to me like this, before he stretched his hand, 
when he looked at me when my eye jammed his eye the eyes that was the eyes i saw was displayed like this lightning displaying and then he will be bringing fire he will be bringing lightning he will be bringing different in the eye don't have one 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 like you say our own is stable the eye is not stable it display with power then he did his hand to me like this when he did his hand to me like this before he did his hand to me let me remind you again when he smiled to me there's no teeth that you will say this teeth is bigger than this this teeth is not fine when you look at his teeth you wish i say why god did not give me this fine teeth everything about him was just extraordinary beautiful and handsome there is no say you say ah the air is this the nose is this. you will not get tired of looking at jesus it's like you want to to swallow him is beautiful is handsome all the all the beauty terms put it on him and it's more than that and then he did it to me like this when he did it to me like this i know he want to raise me up i carry my little palm in his as soon as my hand touch his hand there is a power that pass through him straight i felt something like my heart is moving and what enter me it was very cold but not that cold that would give you fever it was kind of sweet cold sensation and what i noticed all my mind my thought of wickedness and the evil thought immediately when that thing enter me the thing turn like a book like this like i, I cannot remember anything wicked I be, it's like you have to be remembering that what 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 was i thinking i can't remember i can't remember jesus delete sin in my life it made me to become like i don't have evil evil mind anymore everything changed but i cannot say he put his hand in my heart and turn it but as i touch him like this like this a transformation take place then a carry is big tom when my hand come into his hand like this he carry his big tom and press me before you raise me up he look at me with a smile when you look at his eye you will be afraid but you will enjoy looking at him too but you just be like this this person is a is a powerful person then he said to me with a smile i am alpha and omega i am the beginning and the end i am jesus your lord that died for you oh papa i was shocked is this jesus i look at him he smile at me i look at him he smile at me and he raised me up and then he cuddled me put his hand behind my back and then he said to me welcome to my kingdom and then i look at jesus he said let us go and then i enter and when i enter i thought nobody was in heaven i thought nobody was in heaven but when i enter to my surprise because the people i saw in hell the massive crowd of people i saw in hell i thought nobody is going to heaven but when i enter heaven i was surprised to see countless saints endless saints i cannot see the end of heaven i saw white i saw glory i can see peace i can see joy i saw people i was so amazed i said ah people are in heaven people make it to heaven because all the judgment that Jesus, satan was giving to me i was imagining who will be on earth that will not lie that will not fornicate that will not drink that will not commit sin i say ah god that you are wicked god you are just deceiving all god who, who who is in that world that will not that will not lie god just shows mercy but i never know there are people that they determine never to commit sin that they were on earth they never commit sin they make up their mind to be holy and today i able to, i was able to see them and i say wow so truly people can be on earth and be a child of god and come to heaven because satan say no sinner will go to heaven satan make it clear to me say no sinner anyone carrying my property can never enter heaven satan told me then i say nobody will enter because i don't know that women were in this world that are holy then I look, I say, wow. 
I saw countless number of saints. So let me tell you, if you don't deserve to go to heaven, Jesus has people that they are enough for him to worship him. Jesus is just pitying you. If you go there, you are like, number what? There are people there already. That if you think that, if I don't serve God, he will, he will, it's only you, you are deceiving yourself. He has sent, you have angels, enough already that they will be worshiping all the time. So you, if you choose the side of Satan, you will not be doomed. I look at heaven, I was, I was so thrilled. I saw smiling face. I saw angels. I saw children. I saw children. A woman was sitting in the midst. That is the only thing I would say here. Then I close. I saw a woman sitting among countless number of children. And then Jesus said to me, do you know these children? I said, no, Jesus, I don't know them. And then he said to me, these are the children that you people are committing abortion on earth. When you kill them, the soul come here. They are teaching them the word of God. And then he said, do you know the woman sitting in the midst of them? I said, no. He said, this is Mary. I am sending you to the Catholic that the devil has deceived them. You have now seen Mary. Mary is just like ordinary saints, like any one of you that will make heaven. But devil have deceived the Catholic, thinking that Mary is interceding and Mary knows what is happening. Go and tell them, no saints have the power in heaven to pray for any saint to come here. No saint has the power to intercede. I am the only intercessor. I am the only mediator. I am the only door to heaven. I am the only door to heaven. So all prayers, all me must bow to me. All those that are bowing to different image called Saint Joseph, Saint Paul, Mary, this, that. Tell them anyone channeling their prayer to any saint, thinking they will come to me. Tell them I will charge them as idol worshiper and none of them will come to heaven. So you, that you are busy, say, Mother Mary, pray for all sinners. You are wasting your energy for how many years? Only Jesus can save. Only his name you should pray to. Channel your prayer direct to Jesus. Don't pass it through a passenger. Mary was just fortunate as a virgin. But even Mary walked out his own salvation. Mary did not go to sin when Jesus died. He followed Jesus and served him till he died. Till she died. Is it not so? Bible recognized he was following the disciple, keeping the commandment, obeying what Jesus said, do it like this. That makes him go to heaven. God is not a partial God. If Mary would have turned off, God would have sent him to her. He still remained God. So you, you are here. He's the mother of Jesus. He will talk to his son. I told you, pastors that make us to see Jesus like man. You are thinking because your own son is a president, you can go and talk to your son. That is man to you. Jesus is God. Mary is a man. You cannot go and talk to God to tell, to tell God, God, compromise now you are my son. Let this sinner come because they are calling my name. How many Catholic are drinking alcohol as sinners? They are humanizer. And Mary will be telling God, compromise your holy standard. Bring them because they are praying to me. All of you will go to hell. Only thing that will take you to heaven is righteousness and those that believe in Jesus. So don't waste your time in different church doctrine. The only doctrine is holiness. Without holiness, no heaven. So you that you are wasting your time, carrying statue on your head, praying to statue, burning candle, around it, Mary, go and kneel before you may. You are wasting your time. You are an idol worshiper. Mary don't know what is happening in the world. Mary don't have any power to carry it to heaven. Only Jesus that died for you, and now he will carry it to heaven. And then Jesus said, go and tell them. Then Jesus said to me, I am sending you back to the world. And then Jesus say, look at the church. My church is dirty three times. My church is dirty. My church is dirty. Jesus condemned many practices we are doing. Many doctrine pastors are preaching. I don't need to go there. But Jesus was just telling me that, look at the church. They are wasting their time. They think I'm a, I'm a man like them. Tell them I cannot be all nakedness in my eyes. All this naked dressing that women are putting on. Tell them they are naked for who? I am not a naked girl. When you look at me, do you see my nakedness? And you must be a like me of me. I make you out of my image. Why are you naked? You call yourself you're a daughter of God. Your breast is out. Is Jesus' chest out? Even, even people, witches and wizards, will say, well, we see God, they will tell you that we saw him dressed in a robe, cover himself, looking glorious. You, you are looking like a prostitute, like queen of the coast. I say you are a daughter of God. Jesus, I should tell you, all those that are dressing seductively, 
naked dresses, short skirts, split, anything that will expose your body part that will make man or human being to lust after you, you are going to hell because he has said in his word, any man that look at a woman and lost in his heart, that man has slept with the woman already. So just imagine how many men you have caused them to slump, to, to lust. That is what Satan was telling me. Those your top a tight trouser, short skirt, naked dress. Do you know how many men have died by looking at you? They lost in their heart. And we are the cause that married men are not faithful to their wives because these girls are naked going up and our men are just busy taking them freely. Those young girls that you think is by nakedness you will get a husband. Jesus is angry with you because that nakedness is causing thousands of men to fall and you are thinking you are fresh. You are, that's why men are following you. When you die in that naked dressing you will regret the day you expose your body or a man sleep with you without you getting married jesus talk about those that have anger if you are here you have anger you are not busy praying fasting and say god destroy anger but you are fasting god make me rich god give me connection you are not fasting with the problem that would die that would kill your soul let me tell you today before you waste your time fasting for connection for money for pro promotion Fast and pray and God destroy anger in my life. Malice, gossip, unforgiveness, stealing, backbiting, jealousy. These are sin Jesus was calling. So begin to pray against this thing now. Because Jesus said, no sinner, no sinner will ever come to my holy city. As I cast sin out, when Satan sin, I throw him out immediately so that nobody will know what is sin in heaven. Neither no sinner will come to heaven to come and be telling them how sin is. All the people that are going to heaven are sinless. Their mind has rejected sin. So when they go to heaven, what we will be singing there is hallelujah. The song we will be singing there is righteous and holy. So we will not be talking about gossip. Hey, look at this person, man. Sure. Me that I work more than this person. Gossiper will not go to heaven. So don't waste your time. If you're a gossiper, tell God to change you. And say, God, give me the characteristic, the behavior of heaven like Christian. Because when you go to heaven, you cannot go and be gossip. Gossip somebody reward. Because if you are a gossiper, you go to heaven, you carry gossip in there. See this one, Marshall. God is partial. You will bring sin in heaven. So you cannot go there. All those ones that are witch, witches and wizards, God says, I should tell you. Satan is telling you that you are the owner of this art, that you will take over this art. Satan has deceived you because Satan will only rule this for seven years after Jesus said, I'm going to cast this wall, gather everything called sin. And throw everybody to the lake of fire. And I will make a new earth, a new heaven. You that follow Satan and you that are sinner will be in hell. And Jesus said the time that you people will come out of that hell is when he ceased to be God. Can he be ceased to be God? Who can fight God? So it's forever you are doomed. And then Jesus said all those seductive dressing. Open back. Jesus talked about dwelling. Jesus said I told your forefathers to take away the accosting from their body. And you people are doing it. Tell them, I am the Lord, the God. The, yesterday, today, and forever. I am still the same God. What I ate it before, I ate it now. I will hate it forever. What I commanded your fathers, your forefathers, to so take away from them because I don't want it on them. I am still the God over your soul. And I still say, I don't want those things on your body. Tell them that anyone that put those things on their body, the accursed things can never come to heaven. And then he said, Jesus, Jesus said, Satan knows that time will come. My children will know that jewelry is a sin. Earring, chain, all these things. And then he went ahead and deceived their church father to tell them the sign of marriage. That wedding ring is just to show sign of love. It's not part of jewelry. Tell them that wedding ring is part of jewelry. What bind husband and wife? It is my word, not the ring what keep the marriage going it is me not the ring this ring has made many of them to disobey my word when i told them that divorce is a sin you that you are married god say you will see you remove the ring from your hand and tell your husband i'm not interested again in this marriage the husband will take the ring and believe truly my wife have removed the marriage that we are separated and you go and remarry. The Lord said, let me tell you, it is not the ring that joined you. It is my word. And I said to death, do you and that man part. Even if the man is beating you, or you the man, the, the wife, have not given birth, or the wife is rude, don't have any right to send her away. As long as you have taken her as your wife, your first wife. And then Jesus said to me, go and tell those wife that are thinking that this is the ring 
that will make their husband to be faithful. Tell them that it is my word that will make their husband to love them. I have commanded all husbands in my world that if a husband married a woman, the husband should love the wife. He should cherish the wife. He should take the wife so precious. He should not beat the wife, neither do secret into the world to do evil to the world i have commanded all husband so if your husband know my word your husband will not cheat on you will not beat you so all those wives that are telling their husband to wear rings so that women will know you are married the wing will chase women away tell them it's a deception and tell the husband that are forcing your wife to wear wedding ring thinking that is that ring that will make them to submit they will not cheat on them tell them that i have commanded all the women in the world married women and they should obey their husband submit to their husband so what couples should do let the couples make their spouse to know the word of god when you the husband make your wife to know jesus and know his word the wife will obey you respect you submit to you and you wife when you make your husband to obey jesus believe in jesus and his word your husband will not see other woman your husband will love you so Jesus has to tell you that ring is a deception. He cannot drive woman away from your husband, neither man from your wife. Satan is just deceiving people that that ring can make your spouse be faithful. That ring is the demon in your marriage. Jesus said, take away your ring, all jewelry, putting on perfume. Tell those old, when, old men and women that are dying their hair. You are deceiving who? God has given you gray and you are dying it to continue to deceive the one that you are young so that you continue to live in sin. God say you can deceive me but you cannot deceive me. Dying of fear is a sin. Appreciate the stage you have reached in Jesus name. Jesus talk about all this drinking of alcohol talking about drugs addicts you that you are selling those things attachment lipstick jesus said this are jezebelic property he called this property the allot property that's why you see a married woman put those things a man will see say a man will see be toasting you because you are carrying the the property of jezebel the property of prostitute lipstick makeup eyelash open breath bleaching falseness glittering things you you are attracting customer to tell you that i am here look at me but the only child of god we should dress modestly decently most of us what we are dressing like this without any ring when a man sees us he say ah this is now holy woman some places we go people will say well done man god bless you man did they see me as a married woman the, is there any ring in my hand but there's a power that follow a child of god when you go people give you respect is it not so so you that you think that is well i show ring they will respect me or i should dress then they know we are important in the society if me and you go somewhere that people will respect me because when they say they say woman of god god bless you ma ma pray for us god will sit with you did i tell them because i'm working with the king of kings and the lord of lords the presence of god is upon me so if you want to have respect be a child of god hallelujah it is not about what you put on your body jesus said get this accosting from your body remove them from your body and god want all those ones that are not paying tight you that your church you are not paying tight or you you are not paying correct tight if you don't know how to pay tight go and ask your overseer your pastor god say all those that are not paying tight and those are not paying correct tight, they are robbers and not robbers we go to heaven hallelujah so today you have so many sin in your life no time i am just expanding it for you to know more now you have heard that there is hell and there is heaven and i've told you the people that will go to hell maybe you are living in that kind of sin you have anger you have lying tongue you have so many sin in your life you smoke you sell cigarettes you take drugs or you drink alcohol you say ah this is just two percent it's all part of alcohol you are living your life wayward you are partying your life you don't have time for god you are not holy you are not righteous you you do so many things you take bribe you give bribe you are corrupt we are talking about corruption in the, in the world you are part of those in the office that do corruption change figure thief, steal money and you say you are a christian you are you are a liar some of you are married to somebody that have married before if the wife is still alive you are not sitting there because you are a second wife i say i did not meet this woman there and this that they have divorced that's why they mar- god say this is a sin a divorcee no have right to remarry when your husband is alive your wife is your first husband your first wife as long as they are alive you don't have right to remarry so today you have done many things and you don't know when you will die this year we have started its mysterious death everywhere even in my country they told me one shocking thing a pastor and the wife was drinking tea and the wife told the husband honey try now we are late for church program the man said wait let me finish this text i'm doing 
He was on his phone. The woman said, oh yeah, me too. Let me sit down and drink my tea. She finished drinking her tea and said, let me rest more. As soon as he stretched on the bed, on a chair, she died there. The husband finished touching his phone and said, oh yeah, mommy, let's go off and dress. The woman did not answer. I said, get up now. You are the one that said we were late. Now I'm finished uh, doing what I want to do on my phone. Let us go. No way. Service is going on. They were waiting for mama and papa. Mama have died just now. The man shake the wife, raised the hand. The man did not believe it. He told that the woman is faking it. He said, I don't like this kind of joke. Oh, get up. He went up, finished dressing, came down. The woman was seen like that. He never know the woman have died after just drinking tea. Who can tell that kind of mystery? What kind of death is this? So, you don't know when you will die. Somebody say, hey, rapture, rapture, have not come. rapture will not come yet. Forget about rapture. What about your own day of death? Somehow, people are dying before rapture. Death can come before rapture. And you know this year is your own year? You are on top of Okada going up. And who, who's Okada will hit you and you will not wake up again? You will be driving and there. I'm not wishing it for you, but we have to prepare for death. Death can come at any time. You will be in your office, bend your head, say headache. You will not wake up again. They were giving me one of my friends that died behind me. They go, he went to hospital to take drip. They never know he have sugar. Until they give him one drip that have sugar. The sugar shoot up. There she died. But the doctor thought that she's lying down still. After the drip finished, they removed the drip. They say, oh yeah, madam, get up. She have died. That is the statement. And I'll be warning her. She said, Linda, pray for us. We are coming. Now she have gone to see what I was saying. You, maybe this can be the last time you will hear this word. Tomorrow, rapture will take place. Next week, problem. We don't know what. We don't, even Nigeria we are sitting on is by the grace of God. We have our enemies that hate the church. That they are planning to take over. You don't know where you will jam them tomorrow. But what is it? For we, children of God, we are not afraid of death. My own fear is don't die in sin. Unprepared soul. So today, the Lord says, I should tell you. Truly, you are not ready to see the Lord. Your attitude has told you that truly, if you die now, you are not going to heaven. Some of you are very rude. You don't know how to speak. You have anger, terrible anger. You are so disrespectful to your husband. God said, wife, submit. But you, you are the head in the house. You are the head in the house. You know you have not been respecting your husband. Your husband's heart is bitter for you. That alone has closed heaven for you. You cannot pray. You cannot fast. You cannot support the house of God. You are ashamed to evangelize to people. You are ashamed to carry the Bible. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me today in this world, me too. When you die, I will be ashamed of you before my father. You are ashamed to carry the Bible. So today, you want to live a new life. I have told you, without holiness... You shall not see the Lord. Yes, you must cover your nakedness. Holiness, you must cover your nakedness. Holiness, you must not lie. You shall not fornicate. You shall not commit adultery. You should not steal. You should confess your secrecy. You should live a blameless life. Nobody should point finger at you in your village, in your family, say, it's a thief, it's a liar. You must go back and settle with your debtor, with your offender. You must live a blameless life. Yes, if you want to go to this heaven. If you say it is too hard, all of us say it is too hard, but look at me today. The grace God gave me to go and convert. Even I went to Nepal office in my country to tell them that I was tapping lights. Even when they make the announcement, those that tap light will go to prison. I said, let me go. Church was praying for me. When Finda went ahead of me, I was talking to the minister of power. The man said, hey, now so hey, that's so the thing they Finda said, now so they said me too, I will, I will confess to government too. The minister of power too, they asked Finda, lead me to cry. Because me to the way I'm still in here, it's not easy. Finda said, well, forgive my sister first. What can we do before we come to you? Because your own sin is bigger than my sister. Oh. You, is, you are the president. The man said, I fear. I will, this kind of thing. Finda said, yes. You are not bigger than God. God will go to judge you for this minister of power that you are eating the money. People are not having the light. They put it there to do the work. You are stealing it. And some of us, we are crying. We don't have light. So it's coming on your head. The man begins to tell Finda, have mercy on me. Please pray for me. I'm telling you, there is power in this world. So today, I am here to tell you, if you are ready to go to heaven, see Jesus is here. Angels are everywhere. There is one thing Jesus told me, anywhere you go, my daughter, to testify what I told you, I will be there with my angel. I am giving last chance, last grace. Like God is forgiving all your sin and giving you free visa to heaven. I will be there to receive those that will come to me. I am receiving them. But those that will harden their hearts, it's going to stand against them that tomorrow when they die, they will say, Lord, I did not know. I will tell them, you had, but you had in your heart. 
So please, the Lord is here and he has been doing it. God has been back in this revelation. I never know this sister. The message he had said from Sister Lena, it was from Jesus. It's Jesus that gave me this revelation. And Jesus has been back in this revelation. Even when we went to India, an Indian woman said, your message changed me. Did I know her? Did I even know India? Did I have any family? It's Jesus that sent this message. Don't listen to any man that will say, don't listen to her. It's a lie. Who's Liarin? Who's perfume? Don't mind that. Say, Go and leave your husband here. You will hear. Don't listen to those people. These are agents of that. Day. There are many witches and wizards today that are calling themselves sisters and brothers. They are out to deceive you. The person that is telling, don't live holy. Don't listen. You can be, she can be an agent, but you don't know. So today, it's you and Jesus now. The Lord said, I will ask you, if he called you home today, or this month, this year, are you sure you will be stand before him and say, and God will look at you and say, welcome my faithful servant. Or Jesus will tell you, because you know the secret sin you are living. Or Jesus will tell you, you workers of iniquity, you evil worker, get out before me. Are you sure you will be welcome, or they will reject you? Let's be on our feet. The question is for you now. Close your eyes and talk to Jesus. Are you sure you will make heaven? Are you sure if you die today, you will go to heaven? Or are you sure if the trumpet blow now, sound now, you will make heaven? Are you living well with your husband? Are you living well with your neighbor, your husband, family member? They are wicked to me, me too, I hate them. Are you living a Christian life in your neighborhood? Or you are a, or you are a quarrel person, you quarrel people. Your neighbor know you that you are a wicked woman, wicked man. Are you a righteous woman? Are you dressing holy but your heart inside is bad? Are you a righteous person in the house of God? Check yourself. Close your eyes and check yourself. You call yourself Christian. Are you sure you are a Christ follower? Or you are just following Jesus for miracles, signs, and wonders? You are just following for the food that perishes. How many abortions have you committed? How many abortions are you... Maybe some of you are even planning to do more. How many men have you slept with? You are not married. Some of you are married. You still go and sleep with your boss. How many defilements have you done to yourself? How are you treating your stepchildren? How are you treating your family members? How are you treating your colleagues? How are you treating sinners? Are you discriminating? How many souls have you won for you? Since you know this truth, how many people you have preached to, but you are busy condemning people? Check yourself. Are you qualified to go to heaven? Can you say truly you are a child of God? Ask the Lord. Father, show me mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Now it's to you. You that you are righteous, you are keeping the commandment, you are blameless, you can judge yourself. Congratulations, the Lord shall tell you, keep it up. But you that you know, you have compromised the standard. You have gone into little, little error. Foxes have come into your Christian life. Little time, the sin will pump out of your life. Or you, you have never been a born again Christian before. But the Lord, you want to give your life today. As that sister testified, a new life. You want to change your life. The old life, they know you for now. People will be seeing and say, are you the one? You have changed. Oh, you are looking glorious. Oh, ah, you are a holy child of God. Ah, you are dressing different now. This is the new life. If you are there, you want to give your life to Jesus. And you want Jesus to make you a new creature. You want Jesus to make you a friend. You want Jesus to save you. Because there is a damnation. There is a fire hanging on top of this wall. You don't want to die with sinner. Raise up your hands. Wherever you are, raise up your hands. You want to give your life to Jesus? Or you are a born again Christian, but you are backslidden before. You want to go back to the Lord and say, Lord, strengthen me. Please come in front. Please come in front. Don't be ashamed. The problem with some of you, when they say come in front, you'll be ashamed. This is not time of shame. Only you will be in your coffin. Only you will die. And everybody will be looking at you in your coffin like this. So don't be ashamed of man. Man is only there to block you. Come and stand before God. Don't be ashamed. You'll be a leader in the church. Pastor, why? But you know you are a sinner. You know you and your husband used to quarrel and fight secretly. This is a sinful practice. Come and tell the Lord to show you. You don't have a perfect hope. Come to the Lord. Come to the Lord. Come and give your life to Jesus. Come and give your life to Jesus. Come and tell the Lord to sanctify you. Come and tell Jesus to renew you. Tell Jesus to wash you. Tell Jesus to remove all the sins. All the sinful acts in your life. Tell the Lord to deliver you. Tell the Lord to kill your heart for fashion. All this love of worldliness. All this love of makeup. These are sinful things. Tell the Lord to make you hate them. Tell the Lord to make you love holiness. Tell the Lord Jesus to change your heart. Tell the Lord. Open your mouth and ask God for mercy. Ask the Lord for mercy. Ask the Lord for mercy. Tell the Lord, God, forgive me. Have mercy upon me, Lord Jesus. 
have mercy upon my past life. The wickedness I used to do to man, what I did in the village before coming to the city, the evil I did in my former apartment I left there. Oh, Jesus, show me mercy. Ask the Lord, ask the Lord, ask the Lord. Jesus, have mercy on me. Jesus, show me mercy. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back, no turning back. Decided to follow Jesus. Have you decided? To follow Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back, no turning back. Amen. We have heard the word of God. Uh, now that the Lord has convicted you, you have come out, confess your sins to God, tell the Lord you are sorry, mention your sins to him, and he will forgive you. Open your mouth and pray for yourself. Call the names of the sins you are committing before the Lord. This is what I am doing. Father, have mercy upon me. Forgive me. Or if you are backsliding, tell the Lord about it. Or you have compromised. Lord, this is my sin. Forgive me. Ask the Lord to give you the grace to live a righteous life, to live a holy life, to live a godly life. Let God break the power of sin from your life. Let God cleanse you from every stain, purge and purify you make you a new creature that as you receive him today he will give you the power to be a daughter of god power to be a son of god power to be a child of god power to be a new creature let old things pass away tell god telling lie committing fornication and adultery gossiping fighting with my husband disobedience stealing will become an old thing in my life my life will change from henceforth from godly dressing Use of jewelry, use of attachment, use of weavon, use of lipstick, use of all ungodly attire will be an old thing in my life. I'm a new creature now. Jesus' name we pray. You say after me, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Your word has reached me. I acknowledge my sin and transgression. Forgive me, O Lord. Wash my sins away. Both the ones I remember now and the one I do not remember. Cleanse me from all sin. Make me a new creature. Let there be a turnaround in my life. Give me the power to be righteous and godly. In Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word of life, the word of transformation, the word of revelation that you have given to us today. Lord, we are praying that as many as have surrendered to you, Lord, receive them in Jesus' name. Remove the guilt of sin from them. Let condemnation leave their lives. 
Wash away every sin in Jesus' name. Amen. Only the blood of Jesus can cleanse every sin, can take away every stain. Father, we are praying, I pray for them that the power of sonship, the power to be daughter of God, give to them in Jesus' name. Amen. Let things become different. Things they love to do before, they will hate it henceforth. They will not do it any longer. Jesus mighty name we pray. Every yoke, every chain, every power, tying them to sin, tying them to the world, break it Lord in Jesus name. Thank you Father. In Jesus name we pray.